Boys get AC! Yes, sir! What the fuck? The fucking boys! Yeah, baby! Oh. I'm co-hosting Bust with the Boys today. I might have to go shit water any moment during this podcast. I'm talking about the cops. Well, it is 2021. Like <laughs> My legs thicker than a Snickers and a bowl of oatmeal. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you reading, don't laugh to it. You're gonna shit yourself again. Are you reading the highlight? Are you reading? <laughs> Calm down. That's I'll run it. <laughs> Is that the next one? No fucking <laughs> way. Jelly roll. No fucking way. You remind me of Kevin Hart's theory of if you show up late, show up energetic and that's, I'll forget you're that's late. That's all you gotta fucking do, dude. That's how you came I in here. I was thinking that when I walked in, man. I was saying that when I walked in, I was now like. Now listen, Ernest wouldn't feel that way if he didn't just wake up in the parking lot. Uh, yeah, I, I got here early and went to sleep. Dude, this has got to be the most redneck podcast to be. Man. Easily, <laughs> easily. It's about to be, yeah. No question. Look the at that sweater. Resting on you my like boob. this thing, dude? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, I love that. Rips. Yeah, it's got oh, 77 girl. on the back, which I don't really want. Because I don't need people to know like who I am all the time. Like, right? I'd rather just yeah. do that. Oh, you're the guy. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm a big birth year number guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think a classic '69 or yeah. I'm a big, I'm a big no number guy. We have a we have this dumb joke on this podcast that if you wear another man's jersey, he has the right to fuck you. I think we stole it from Crystalia though, so it's not really our joke. Oh, that is a Crystalia. It's a Crystalia. We do. We. Sp- Probably snake like ninety five percent of our jokes from Delia. It's a compliment. That's all right though. It's a compliment uh-huh. to the Delia. Yeah, that's yeah. a real yeah. deal, yeah. dude. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. When I showed up today, I was like, God, of course I'm gonna get in the group chat with the two boys, and then you guys are gonna show up on time, and I'm gonna show up. My yeah. watch. You know my favorite part of the show. It's eleven fifty four. I make it. You have a watch. I got a watch on. Yeah, 1054, actually. My favorite part was Taylor said, what time do y'all want to go? I said, anytime afternoon. He said, 12 it is then. (laughs) It could have been 12.05. Not bad, dude. Jesus. I was thinking about going like that early early twice this year. This is one of the two. This is as early as you've gotten up? Literally, twice this year I've gotten up this early. Hold hold that thought one second. Hey, (laughs) I need everybody to listen very closely. I have a very uh, important announcement. This podcast is brought to you by Chevrolet. Go oh, shit. Come on now. The greatest, yeah, most man. dependable vehicle there is. If you're wondering how dundant we can be, we're going to do it every single week. It's the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. That's right. I said Silverado. The strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Why did I say that? Because they wrote it twice. Silverado is strong, advanced, dependable, and hardworking. Silverado is dependable, like the people who drive them. Everyone here has a Silverado. They might not have driven it today, but... Mm. Oh, can't say GD. Can't say GD in the thing. But gosh darn it. Well, everyone's got a Silverado because when you want to be on time, not like I wasn't today because I didn't drive a Silverado today. Because if I was going to drive a Silverado, you know your boy's got to be on time. When you're on time, you drive a Silverado because you're dependent, dependable, just like the vehicle you're driving. The design is big, bold, and commanding. This truck turns heads. A partner with grit, determination. Anything is possible. And Silverado is a partner that uh, in that. God, dude, little words. Yeah. Little I and N. It's just the big it, ones it really. Just the big ones, ones are all right. It's superfluous. Yeah. Little ones I'll knock that out of the park. Right. Yep. But the I and the N. Yeah, a lot sure. of things you guys can do with, uh, I'm sure you guys have never tailgated before, but you can you can tailgate, you can haul, you can do towing, off-roading. I think Ernest uh, was tailgating outside when we got here. I think he's got a, he's got a home under a cardboard never, box right outside here. I never dude. stopped. He never stopped. Uh, you can help a family friend or a family member. I wouldn't, but if you guys want to, you're more than welcome to help your family or friend move uh, and do road trips. Why? Because it's very dependable. It's what you need a road trip. Uh, the Chevy Silverado is amazing. Listen. I don't need to say a model year because why? doesn't matter when they started making it and when they're going to stop making it. They're going to be the most dependable vehicle ever between those times. Congratulations, Chevy, on being the best vehicle on the road, especially in America. God bless you. God bless everybody. And happy fourth, boys. Yes, happy sir. Fourth Let's go. Let's, go. By Let's with go. The boys. Let's go. This is outstanding. Two of my favorite people in all of Nashville on the bus. Let's kick to it. What did we do yesterday? You guys went to Ernest's house? Listen, man. Fuck Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> he showed up with a 12-pack of Terramana. Fuck. He should, did he really? Yeah, I might, dude. I might have to go shit water any moment during this podcast. I'm holding one in as we speak. It has been... Listen, this dude... I showed up with some liquor, for sure. Yeah. But Ernest showed up with a truck of liquor. Sure. I mean, a truck with tap 
cocktails on it and like beer. Four when different I first cocktails and a beer. I was yeah. like, this is whack. He's got an old beer truck. This sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I went to the guy. I was like, what kind of beer do you got? He's like, oh, no, we're not doing beer. We're doing cocktails. I said, on tap? <laughs> yeah. He was like, yep. And <laughs> Ernest has created the menu. And let me tell you where I get fucked, Taylor, in this situation. I want to hear it. Yeah. I, need to I hear am it. a straight tequila guy. I know my devil and I dance with it well. Yes. But Ernest tricks me. For every shot I take, he's like, try this mojito or whatever the <laughs> fuck it is. So I'm like, whatever. And then I'll finish it and be like, what was in that? He was like, rum and such and such and such and such. I'm like, fuck, Ernest. Yeah, dude. We'll take another shot. I'll be like, try this peppermint fucking, what was the cucumber thing you made? Oh, yeah. Uh, hey. Fizz drink. Whoa. What was what the cucumber thing you made for Jillian? No, Wolf? listen. I didn't fucking, make them. It, the, this it's a uh, tap truck Nashville and no it's these, these two guys. No free shout outs. They better they better send no a check. free shout outs. <laughs> better send a check tap truck. Check on the way. But uh, yeah, dude, they hands they hand squeeze and make all their own uh, cocktails. Put it in a tap or a keg or whatever, and tap it and run fresh cocktails all night. Really? And, and we got blitzed. I'm still blitzed. I mean, I can't tell if I'm hungover or drunk. I'm in that weird gray Extra area. Energy. Yeah. You wake up and you're kind of like, I feel there's no hangover here. Yeah. And then two o'clock today, it's game game over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of need to get ahead of that. No question. <laughs> hair of the dog. Do we have any here? I'm sure there's some whiskey or something around here. Oh, we do got some whiskey. Do you guys want some of that to just, Fuck. well, it's going to help. Do we do? It's do going we? to help. Yeah. I mean, I'm my... Yeah, I mean, it is the 5th of July. <laughs> it is the 5th of July. It's my daughter's birthday today. <laughs> oh, it is? It's her fourth birthday. Oh, to my God. Yeah. 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 Baby. She's like, Daddy, come play with me. I'm like, nah, Daddy's got to go do a podcast. I love you so much. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the bus, baby, <laughs> yeah. but I'll be bad. Shot what are you talking about, Blas? Right there. No, oh, Ernest right. is hurting bad. Sure, he, knows he knows what's coming. For sure. He knows what's Ooh. coming. And it's cold. I'm a, on the, is on it really cool? Bus, it would have been bubbling. And she would have cool? been fucking it's not cold. It's not, I mean, no, that's cold for the bus. <laughs> for the bus. That, that, yeah, I mean, yeah, that yeah, is sure. excellent. I mean, it's colder up. than I expected. Yeah, you want? Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of bubbles. Oh, man. I'm telling y'all, if I take a shot of this, I'm going to have shit. For sure. It's all right. Hey, I heard y'all got a shitter. We got a shitter now. What? Shay, another oh, yeah. clapper. <laughs> another clapper, boys. This is the only clap you'll enjoy. I want to. I want to go back in time to the first time I oh. got on this bus to now, and how far things have come. We've really done it, haven't we? Look at, oh, look look at us. us. I we've uh, we're now we're now going to sponsor athletes on uh, from yeah. the NCA because they fucked up. We had a PSA last week about it. Yep. But more importantly, we got AC, and I think that's the the biggest thing. Huge win. Oh, you've dude, uh, huge. but you've actually dressed down from the first time you were on the podcast. What were you wearing? You were wearing the first like, time I was wearing pants. like camo pants and a Hawaiian shirt yeah. and Gucci slides. I would have worn my Gucci slides today, but I left them uh, in Colorado. Ernest is barely here. No, Let's he just is. start that. I mean, he yeah. is. Literally, this is my I, fear. I pulled up and he was. Drooling on himself in his truck with his aviators on in the truck. Running. I was asleep when he got here. What Dead happened? Asleep. I just got here and fell asleep. I, he had I a fucking <laughs> fucking truck pouring out cocktails. I also have a baby, so like normally you get done with the party and it's like uh, I'm gonna go pass out. But we got done with the party. And it's like now I gotta stay up till two. See, you're a better baby. man than me. Like I, my drinking experience has really got cut in half. Maybe more than that. Gentlemen, I, I love y'all uh, both, and I'll be right back. I'm, I'm just gonna go shit. Are water, you really? Water. Dog, I'm telling you, this, man, is, this is brutal, dude. There's a first for everything. Get out of here. Fuck Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll be right back, y'all. This is finna be... I'm finna go pass a fucking iguana or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Time yourself. Shit through a screen door and not hit a wire. I'm so happy. This What a, what a <laughs> blessed... What a blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what a, what a blessed opportunity! Yeah, for I don't think he has, does. He have an idea where it's he's going? So dark out there. It's dark. Is it really? Oh, no. All of these are painted for some reason. This is actually it's dark. That dark out there. He's wearing all black too. Dude, he's stand a chance. He won't be able to see himself. He might shit himself. <laughs> Alex goes. You good, brother? <laughs> you good. God, do we uh, have no. anything? You got dude wipes. He need we, eight minutes in. The first time Jelly Roll was on this podcast, he made three dick jokes in eight minutes, and now he's taking a shit within eight minutes. Yes, the man just sets he you know he sets the tone on every single podcast. Yes, yeah. I mean, what you sign up for Jelly Roll to get the tone set? You really do. <laughs> when uh, so I you know what we talk about heartbreak all the time on this podcast, what we go through on a day to day basis, and yeah. Will and I recently went through some heartbreak on with our teammates. Uh, AJ Brown stood us up. And followed by that, Derek Henry ghosted me. I asked if he wanted to come on the podcast for 30 minutes and he, no response until after My the podcast. My God. It was hard. For this episode? I'll forgive them because they're good at football, but I'll never look at them the same. Yeah, you shouldn't. And then uh, obviously uh, last week, Hardy. Hardy says he's going to come on the podcast. He's all about it. Now listen, I don't know Hardy. Was my first impression of him was it was a voice text. Yeah. I'm apologizing 16 love times. Text, in 40, I love the voice text. Yeah. He's about that too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
He sends a voice text. Well, actually, at first he sends a text saying, you know, I say, hey, boys, what are we thinking? Let's go podcast Monday, not whenever you guys want. We can do whenever you guys want to do it. He's all about it, correct? Mm-hmm. Now you can, if I'm missing anything at any time, you let me know. So far, so good. All right, thank you. Hardy comes back, what, probably 48 hours before the podcast yeah, is two supposed day, to start? Yeah, two days afterwards, it was like, hey, sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I didn't. And, and to his defense, if he thinks that like a music video is going, he should be able to get two hours. But sometimes the production team is like, we need you here at 8 a.m. and uh, your tail lights at 8 p.m. And that sucks because he's probably to only going to be music used. Video. He, yeah, he's probably only going to be used for two and a half hours of actual recording time. Now, are we allowed to say who is it with? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the Tyler Farr song. The the I think I don't know really. Well, yeah, I think it or. It's not Tyler Farr, Brantley Gilbert, the worst country song ever, right? I think it's that song. Is it actually titled the worst country song ever? Yeah. Well, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> this is the worst country song of all time. And it talks about like, I don't like sweet tea. I don't like whiskey. I don't fucking like all these things. And, yeah, da, yeah. Da. and if you like that, then this is probably the worst country. And if you ain't like that, that's probably the worst country I like song that. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. that's a good yeah, little deal. Pretty clever little joint so they're doing a music video how many music videos have you done i've done one two three like five or six so music you, videos you've done enough to know the process yeah you've done high production probably done low production you probably done everything done all, 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 the, all the types of production and it's really a 12 hour gig why for uh, lighting? It's all day because i mean everything's getting shot a couple times at least yeah and then you know there's a lot of hurry up and wait which is my least favorite thing about doing anything is hurry up. We got to da, 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 And then you wait and music videos are like that a lot where it's like, be here, be here at eight. You're going to do hair and makeup is they cut out two hours for yeah. it'll take 15 minutes. So then you're sitting, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's a lot of that. That's what you're sitting around doing. God, I see as a person who never does music videos, you sit there and be like, that'd be so sick to go do those things. I feel like after two or three, you're like, fuck doing these things. Yeah, I don't think it's people brutal. people really don't look forward. Like, I look forward to get, like the outcome of the music video. Uh-huh. And I think music videos are dope and the art behind it. But like always have been. But yeah, the the act of doing it. I would rather I would rather act than like just do music videos, you know, like yeah. I would rather have scenes and yeah. shit like instead of a white backdrop and you wearing all white singing at the camera. Yeah, it's like I you, wish music videos. Would, I wish I could have <laughs> yeah. that music video. I just got Tim McGraw. What's that Tim McGraw song? Uh, I went two point seven seconds on a on boom, boom name. Oh, full live like you were you. dying. First off, first time I heard that song, tears. Yeah, welting down my written cheeks, by dude. Craig Wiseman. It was a great. It's a phenomenal song. Still is. Lives on forever. Yes. Um, but he, I'm pretty sure he's like an all white with a white backdrop. Yes, he has black cowboy black hat. cowboy hat, and it's just like slowly placing things in the background, little yeah. thing. Yeah. And it's like, hey Tim, let's hit that. Hey, that had to be a four minute, like. Four times. I guess the song's two and a half minutes. Yeah, but that's fifteen minutes of work. But I'll bet you I'll guarantee you that was a twelve hour day. <laughs> no fucking way, dude. Like <laughs> well, how says, many wa- oh sorry, he was wearing jeans. He was wearing I was really hoping for the all white so where he just had, floating They head. had the first iPad. He had the what? The first iPad just popped up on screen. I remember my uh it didn't that look like like a crazy oh, like you a, thought that was the first I thought you were being serious, like that's the no. actual first iPad. No. What are you sitting like that for, Tim? Go back. Dude, I'm telling what? you, dude. There's no way that is this Tim... actually how the song starts. I don't remember it being yeah, like he's this. barefoot too. Yeah, well, you got to be barefoot. But the boot That's cut a big jeans. Chesney thing. It's like the family portrait. Yeah, this it, it really is. is. It is like it, the family yeah. portrait. Yeah, the Shout other three are still that. on the beach, and Dad's like, "Hey, let me go run over here and shoot a quick little number." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How'd you do? I feel like I gave birth to a family of spiders. <laughs> 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 Oh, regardless, regardless of, of killing Tim for the... He's sitting on a clear chair. He you is see the chair. Go back. You go back six <laughs> seconds, you see the chair. Look at you oh Obviously, my. the chair he's sitting on. Well, hey, Tim, we got this like, great idea. We're going to have you suspended in air. Yeah. All right? You're going to hold a squat pose while yeah. you're doing your music video. We're just giving Hardy a hard time because he... he I don't want to be that guy. 
we made the call to him to go on the podcast. I knew I was your B player. Did you really? I Bro, it's not even that. Too. We were we were the C and D player behind <laughs> AJ and Derek. Well, no, 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 no. That, that was those were a few podcasts ago. Oh, okay, okay. Guys. I was about to yeah, say, no. bro, we were like the fifth and you sixth my, call. Hey, I was the <laughs> I don't, don't want to <laughs> open wounds, but you were my first text. Okay, let's <laughs> go. So, and then I don't know. Here's the, here's the deal with Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll came on the pod. Uh, had a great time with you. It was a wonderful, Can great we conversation. Talk about one second Oops. about how I just had to wipe my ass with dude wipes. <laughs> dude wipes was a sponsor. Listen. Was or is? Was a sponsor of the pod. They did send us a check, so we'll still talk about Listen, them. Listen, let me tell you this. You don't have any toilet paper there. <laughs> I don't know what dude wipes were designed for. I thought yeah. it was something different than what I just used them for, <laughs> but it also applied to that as well. Yes. It's yeah, that's, exactly, that's exactly when, what when dude wipes are for. When this podcast for. finally got a bathroom, it's everything I expected it to be. It had nothing in it <laughs> at all. It was fucking completely out of toilet paper. It had a big thing of dude wipes and hand sanitizer. It's busting with the boys, not busting with the housewives. Yeah. Somebody's <laughs> <laughs> So it's busting with the housewives that have little mints and two. Toothpicks, a yeah. fucking I need a five star resort. I, I don't know what you think this is. Yankee some candle toilet paper, even if single ply. But I took what I could get. So I feel like you'd rather just, have nothing than single ply. Just know I'm squishing while I'm sitting. Really? <laughs> you know, first, I'm surprised I didn't bring a tinge in with me. I fucking <laughs> just shit out a whole mojito or whatever that shit was. Ernest made me drink last. What night. was the cucumber drink? We kind of bypassed that. What was the name of the cucumber drink? Or something. He had all kinds. It was like it was like a, a, like a cucumber made. spritz. I think it was like just uh, white rum and like cucumber. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I only had one of them. What was My the boy. orange fizzler you had? The orange. Well, the was there an orange drink? There, there was, was a, a margarita. Oh, uh, margarita mojito. The cucumber was the fizz. I think so. There was like cucumber soda, rum, something mm -hmm. like that. But then at the end of the night. He was like, "You ready for the secret drink that isn't on the menu?" Who's he? Who is this? The bartender. Man? Okay. And um, and I'm always ready for the secret drink yeah. that isn't on the menu. Uh, well, why did you wait to the end of the night? Like, yeah, that's what. That's us. Like, Can we bust that out to start with? Yeah. So, but that was a blueberry vodka, blueberry cranberry vodka. Oh, it was fire! It's the one that had a little blueberry. Incredible, in with a little lime on yeah. it. You would assume the blueberry vodka had the blueberries in it. That'd it's be so the good. thing. You would, <laughs> yeah. You'd run that, but yeah, dude. <laughs> Uh, at one point, Delaney comes up. She goes, how many drinks have you had? And I said, honestly, I was like, three. And she was like, no, you haven't. You've had one of all of the drinks on the cocktail list at least. Yes. So that was five. And then I started thinking, okay, and I had two of the most. So and yeah. when I thought three, I probably had, had seven and then we had about seven more. What, so, really? What, he sounded like he was like, that's how you would answer a cop. How many drinks did you have? A couple. Just a just, couple. Just, just a couple. immediately went into three. Like you had, we had three. We had three shots as soon as yeah, it's always, it's always two or three. It's like I'm willing. I'm willing to admit I've had more than one, but I'm not willing to admit I've had more than ten. Yeah. <laughs> we don't hit double digits here. Yeah, but, no, sir. I'm very responsible. But thank yeah. you for asking. Yeah. So y'all were busting Hardy's ass because he's doing something. With, he's, well, he's, he's doing a video. He's, he's doing a music video. Today. I'm not mad at him. Here, I'm, I'm a little hurt because I don't know him, right. you know, <laughs> you watch from a distance. Obviously, when you're friends with you guys, you get to see everyone plugging on the Instagram. You see him kind of cruising around. And uh, I'm like, what a, what a cool opportunity. Get the boy in the pod. <laughs> Ernest is a safety blanket in case he and I get on this thing and it goes, it goes dead. Right. Like if we just sit there and stare at each other like there's no chemistry. Right. <laughs> he starts fucking doing the sirens. He starts pulling up, uh, you know, recent events and shit like that. You're like, well, I guess we'll hit a couple of these. So what do you think of this guy uh, blowing up a toilet and shaking yeah. his hand off or yeah. whatever? You know, yeah. you get worried about those kinds of things. So I'm glad I had the safety blanket. And then he dipped. And then I don't know what. Why well, I, oh, I didn't think of you first. I actually do know why. I'll get in that in a second. Oh fuck. Well, <laughs> Jesus, man. Having well, a rough morning, Taylor. No, Take listen, we're, we're going to air it all out and we're going to bring it up. We break it down and we build you up the way we want yeah, you. Yeah, you know well, what I'm saying? Thank you, man. It's beautiful. I feel so great. Like so, I'm fucking in the reserve right yeah, now. So Hardy's got a music video to do. Yeah. I'm all about people making bank, doing yeah. the craft, right? So if you got to do content, go do your content. Go make your money. Uh, we're making money right now on this podcast. We're making money on this podcast. You guys are, thank you for coming. Yeah. You know you what I'm mean. saying? But we're all making our craft right now. I'm losing money on this podcast. You guys are definitely losing and something, I, but I appreciate you I'm all so coming. To have the shit again on this yeah. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get at least ten likes yeah, for that. I agree. Jelly Roll took a shit in our bathroom. We have ten diehard fans trying to get some feces thought, out of that yeah, toilet. Yeah. Clogged. For whatever reason, I have a marker. I thought about just John Hancock. You should have cocked it. There, that should be bad. the new. Yeah, the, it's Herbie. It's Herbie Hancock. The bathroom wall should be the signature oh. wall. That'd be cool until we have to end the lease in this place and not get our security deposit back. 
or that is your security deposit. You're right. like, no, like <laughs> you should give us a little bit more. These you people see you sign this thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'd be badass. Yeah. But anyway, Hardy, I don't. It's, I knew it was gonna be this hard with you guys to get a full thought through. Hardy dips. <laughs> He's out. That's fine. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Right. And I, but I don't know why. But I was like, fuck, Jelly Roll and Ernest would be an absolute dynamic duo. Make Thanks. it a trio. Yes. Put me in there. A little sizzle with a whatever the fuck. Was this called? Tie-dye? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I okay. thought I dressed a little spicy today. I, I got excited. Yeah. I woke up this morning. I thought I was like, happy birthday to me. I'm like, get the fuck out of the way. Let me put this outfit on. Get ready to see the boys. Yeah. 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 So I get to see you guys. And uh, But the reason why I didn't call the first time was a day or two after the podcast, I reached out. I said, hey, man, had a great time with you. Loved it. It was awesome. I got no response back. No, I no listen. Way. I didn't see that. I don't want to talk about it. I swear. So I was a little I nervous texting you about coming on this yeah, podcast, dude, but you I'm were so you were hot oh, to trot no. right away. <laughs> I was like, "Fucking yeah, let's go." It was hard. We had to wait for his fly fish on that day. Yeah, what? Deal with that. Oh yeah, dude. Look, I didn't know how long that was gonna be. I thought that was gonna be a little nine to twelve experience, but <laughs> but that ended up being nine to like three thirty with get drunk zero. Out there? No. And with zero cell phone service, like no. I didn't even know what we. I woke up that day thinking I was like just chilling in a hot tub, and then they're like, "Hey, everybody, we're going fly fishing." Who's, and I'm who's like, "Everybody, who, who's uh, this? I was with like three other songwriters, and then uh, there's like two other families who were sponsoring us, letting us stay at their house. Mm. We were in Crested Butte, Colorado, beautiful. But they're like, hey, we're, we're all going. We got the slots. We're going to go fly fishing. And I was like, ah, I think I'm just going to chill. And they're like, no, you're going to want to go. You'll regret it if you don't. And I'm like, Whatever, I'll go stay in a creek and get high and drunk, and that's what that's what I thought. <laughs> that's what I thought. But wouldn't you know that we get spread up and everybody's you know a half mile away from each other, <laughs> and I'm not and I'm not the guy fucking that has co a cooler of beer or water, <laughs> zero uh, planning, gum. I didn't bring weed. I didn't bring fuck, dude. In I, Colorado, it's that thing that's grown on trees there. My my instructor had. A pin, thank God that I got to hit a few times. But yeah. dude, I didn't bring nothing but a habit, and um, <laughs> and and I was in, I was in, I was standing in. You know, most people would be knee deep water, beautiful creek, looking at the mountains like this is so nice. And I'm like, when can I get back to service? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I was like, this is pretty. I've already soaked this in, and I appreciate God's beauty. Right. Could use some cell service. <laughs> like, or, or, not or, catching any or fish. A bottle of tequila. Yeah, yeah. I could, you know, anything. Party of one yeah. all day with no service. If yeah, I, I felt like I was on a youth re youth group retreat. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you didn't get in the pen. Did you catch any fish or anything like I that? I didn't catch anything. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. He didn't even well, catch do, a buzz. What do you do fly fishing at three o'clock for? I feel like. I don't know. Apparently, huge there's fisherman. a hatch that happens around noon. What's a hatch? I don't really. Like, actual <laughs> babies are all coming the out. All the flies show up and they're swarming around the water and that's what you're replicating with the fly on the line yeah so i mean other people in my group caught fish lots of them like five or six some of them but <laughs> i didn't <laughs> i didn't catch nothing have you there. ever fly fish before never you're probably doing it wrong yeah. no i no I, hey i will say i'm a i'm they a natural an instructor i'm a natural like my it. instructor had me on fish what the hard part is 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 the Hooking them once they bite, setting the line, yeah, setting it is way harder than just like bass fishing. Because, like, dude, I don't know enough to tell you what I was doing wrong, <laughs> I just know I didn't fucking catch any fish. So, people are like, You're gonna regret it. Here's the deal people saying you're gonna regret it if you don't know what happened, you can never regret it. So, yeah. why don't you just say, Nah, fuck that, I'm just gonna stay in? I got Did you feel you your peer pressured. I got hard peer pressured into it because I, at the end of the day, I would have been the only one left that wasn't doing it. You looked like a real fisherman, though, man. I thought, I thought this guy goes on retreats all the time. I swear, dude, looked like you had on the waders. Uh, I spent two hundred dollars that morning. You looked happy. To freaking look. I told I told my daughter, <laughs> I was like, happy. I'm gonna look like. I'm gonna look. He took that picture of smiling. Yeah. I was like, get me the fuck out of here as soon as it ended. I sent y'all the one photo of me kind of smiling, but you should see the photos. I, I took five photos, <laughs> and I finally was like, you should probably crack a smile because I look <laughs> I look pissed off, dude. I look pissed off. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I I look yeah. like a guy who doesn't have a damn water here. I'm just standing. Broke like, back Ernest, dude. Yeah, you yeah, broke back, back Ernest. Yeah. Broke back he mountain. Was like, he was mad as hell. You didn't know what you signed up for. That's what these guys are doing? Fuck. All right. Yeah. He's hanging out yeah. there. <laughs> Whatever. That's funny. Yeah. So. Well, God damn. You ever been fishing? You ever do that? Yeah. We had never net. Never. Never. Well, well, fuck fuck I, well, listen. I'd hate to cut you off, but we did start a new thing on the podcast. All right. We have to read uh, uh, an uh, ad. Because why? 
We're getting paid right now. Yeah, yeah. Right. Do you want to read this one? You want me to read it? I'll do it. Go ahead. Yeah, go on, go. But put don't don't do bullshit. Like put some love into it. <laughs> Jelly, guess what? This is how it goes. I like it. We're dude. counterclockwise. This podcast is brought bare bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again. God damn it. I looked up and I looked up and read the screen and said, get the fuck out of here. Oh my god, dude. Uh, Holy shit. All right, go again. All right. All right. Big plans this summer. Before you start packing for your next adventure, you need to check out bare bottom clothing. Their versatile lineup of everyday menswear is perfect for getting it done this summer. Bare Bottom Clothing is the go-to for guys looking to update their wardrobe with a high quality and made-to-last threads without dishing out a small fortune. Saving money, making babies. Um, Bare Bottom's lineup of versatile everyday clothing for guys is here to become the MVP of your closet. Spend less time deciding what to wear this summer and more time enjoying it. Your personal experience can be, uh, with the clothing can be any items. I personally love the boxers. Do you really? Yeah, I'm a big boxer guy. Do you can never have boxers? too many boxers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they sell boxers. We should look into that first. But, but that was a good thought for Bear Bottom. Hey, for the personal record. experience, I, uh, I love the boxers. <laughs> hey, so yeah, Taylor, you bottoms. tell me what your favorite uh, they, have a, they have a cotton short that the boy likes to wear quite a bit. They have the five and a half seam, mm-hmm. uh, inseam, which makes it show enough thigh. Now everyone gets on me for not having the biggest legs in the world. But goddamn, I'm going to show them off. You know yeah, what I'm sure, saying? Sure. So I put those on. You think cotton. I might get a little sweaty. Like a little heavy for me, you get one breeze, it goes up and in and out. And they're stretch shorts, and they're no, they're stretchy, they're comfortable. I, I love feel that. like I can run from the cops any day in bare bottom clothing. That's good. Well, it's it's, it's hey, <laughs> and segue, hey, it is 2021. <laughs> <laughs> it is 21, 21. We, let's keep our shorts oh. above the knees. <laughs> You tell me what it has to do. I thought you were talking about running from the cops. Well, it is 2021. (laughs) Oh, God. Finish, hey, finish, finish this goddamn. Oh, 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 no, go back to 2021. It's, this is going to be the best it's 20, ever. <laughs> it's 2021. Let's keep the shorts above the knees. Choose from a, a massive selection of five and a half and seven inch seam shorts. Seven's for the tall guys. I still like the five and a half, though. So. Yeah, I'm probably going to be a seven. Oh, seven five, five and a half inches on me, too. <laughs> My legs thicker than a Snickers and a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> They don't got a pair of shorts that are going to fit me. Oh. <laughs> on the front end. Oh, they might, though. <laughs> they know, might. Because their designs transition from the couch to the gym and work to play or whatever you like to do. Give back. <laughs> giving back is at its core of. <laughs> giving back is at its core of bare bottom. Of what bare bottom does. They've donated 100,000 pairs of shorts to children in need. That's giving, people. We can all do a little bit more of that, shouldn't we? Yep. Uh, pairs of shorts of children in need starting this summer. They will be donating, <laughs> donating a school lunch for each of them sold. This is the reason why I wanted you to read the thing. <laughs> This is because I didn't want this to happen, bro. Don't laugh too hard. You're going to shit yourself again. Are you reading the highlight? Are you re- <laughs> Calm down. You're going to shit. Are you riding the highlight right now? No, re- I'm, I'm, I'm riding the highlight. You want to hit that? I'll run it. <laughs> I got this. You need it. Oh, <laughs> And I'm, and I'm just over here about to try, just, just trying to read the damn It's just like a kid playing popcorn, just waiting, reading it over and over again so he doesn't fuck up when he gets called on. Right now, our listeners are free shipping. God damn it, right now, our listeners are shipping. We're just laughing. Right now, our listeners get free shipping on their first order of these super comfortable threads at barebottomclothing.com with code BUSSIN, B-U-S-S-I-N. Just go to barebottomclothing.com. That's B-E-A-R, like the animal, bottomclothing.com, and use the code BUSSIN to get free shipping on your first order. You're welcome, Bear Bottom. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Send me oh, some Bear Bottoms. Oh, my God, dude. Man. 
Well, by the way, bare bottoms. If you're looking for content like that, buddy, just, <laughs> just be in earnest. No free shout outs is uh, is always looking for sponsors. Yeah. Bare bottoms could definitely sponsor. Yeah. Just be in earnest. Pocket is that the next one? No fucking <laughs> way. Jelly roll. No fucking way, son. It's just Jesus. Oh, oh man, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> pass out. There were so many funny things in there, but the last one that, 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 that tipped it over is when Zins. Taylor okay. looked serious and said, "Giving something we could all do more." of Ernest said, "Yep." <laughs> Ah, oh God! I love. Oh. How I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking... shit a rattlesnake this oh, time. Oh God! Shit, shit, dude. Oh. What a what a day! What a day! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! I well, just woke yeah. up. That's yeah. fucking crazy. Did you just wake up? It's noon. Oh, I set the alarm for eleven. You set an alarm for eleven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> you and I live totally different lives. Yeah. What time did you? <laughs> what time did you go to dude, sleep? I told my wife that this morning. I was like, I bet Taylor woke up this morning, worked out, had breakfast was with his seven? family. Yeah. I was yeah. sleeping. I, I was going to sleep at six fifteen, cussing oh Ernest. Yeah, 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 dude, that is so funny. Is that what time uh, you got back from Ernest? No, no, he fuck no. Left it like. So 10. what were you doing? Just so trying to sober up. <laughs> I bet you weren't. <laughs> I bet you weren't. I bet you're trying to sober down. Oh my God, dude. Uh, I'm just. I'm got. I got the sleeping schedule of a fucking meth head right now. It's been the worst yeah. schedule ever, dude. I sleep Holy from like shit. seven to three. I'm dying God. time. Ugh. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I'm a big early riser. Even yeah. if I stay up late and party, you I wake a up. Kid. Early. Oh, dude! Before I had a kid, I wake up at like six a.m. Do you really? Yeah, I can't help it. I do struggle getting up early. I I have to. I don't want to. I have right. to. But I, I wish I was like that. Yeah. Because if you if you're like, hey, your kids are going to go somewhere for three days. Grandparents are taking them. I'll sleep till ten, hopefully. Yeah, I can't do that. You can't do that. No, I would love to. Oh, dude. How's your life changed since having a kid? By the way, Ernest, <laughs> since the last time you're on this podcast, has had a child. Yeah, yes. Has had a, has had a child. Yeah. They brought another one of these into the world. Yeah, boy, sorry. Sorry, sorry everybody. Yeah. Um, he's going D1 for sure. He's like 10 weeks old right now, and it's pretty awesome. The All the cliches, I said this on my podcast, all the cliches I heard are dead on, but like they continue to be true. Uh, you know, everybody telling you before the baby comes, like, get all your sleep. Yeah. It's like, first of all, what's it going to matter? Yeah. <laughs> me sleeping now has nothing to do with the 38 sleepless nights I'm going to have then. Yeah. Second of all, uh, he's finally now like really following with his eyes and smiling and shit. And all of that is like, uh, he, that's cool. It's shit. so cool. Yeah. He's a cute baby. He's at that age where he was fussing like one. He was out with us most of the day yesterday. He fussed one time. And it was like that cute baby fuss. Then wham, wham. Like yeah. as opposed to like that two year old. You just scream and cry. I got that it. thing going on you know, right now. Yeah, it's a I totally, know exactly what you're talking about. Totally different cry. You Sheesh. know what I mean? It's that cute. Yeah. Like, oh, that's cute. He's even like, you, you're like, it's, oh, look, he's, he's upset. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, when yeah, are you yeah. upset? Because well, I yeah. get the fuck out of my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sleeping. Yeah, I'm yeah. starving yeah. here. <laughs> when, when, yeah. uh, when they're two, it's more like, Jesus, make it stop. I'll do anything. Please stop it. I got one that's turning one on the 20th. And she is, the, the kid is awesome. She's all time. We got a puppy. Puppy's chewing on her legs and stuff like that. And she just backhands the dog and keeps her crawl going. <laughs> yes. Dude. But she is the loudest child ever. I don't oh. think she'll, I don't think she'll talk till she's six. She'll scream. <laughs> I'll be eating and she'll just start screaming and I'll ignore her. And she'll just keep screaming and screaming. And finally, I look at her and she'll go, ah. And she'll point at exactly what she wants. Right. Oh, she's God. got her own little form of communication. Yeah. <laughs> but she is the loudest child. I've like I've been around a bunch of other people, and they're like, "This is the loudest baby I've ever been." Around. And that's the one year old. That's the one year old. She's awesome though. Like she's you had fun one turn four or five today. She turned four today. Okay. Today that's awesome. she turned four. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. It's now that's crazy. starting to get to the glory. Those that's all. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. My my uh, my wife and I were talking last night. We're sitting there watching Narcos. I'm working on my Spanish. And um, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna know the right stuff to say, I yeah. promise. <laughs> and uh, she was she made a point like we met, and then six months later, like this kid was born, like she got pregnant, not born. Obviously, right. it doesn't work. That's not the time. Say sorry, <laughs> all, all the scientists sounds, sounds like God was involved in that. One. <laughs> <laughs> but six months later, she got pregnant, and it's like we not only have her and I's relationship grown up, but her, she has also just grown up with us. And we've all like, kind of, it's just crazy to see that she's four years old now. Yeah. Watch her when she's, and you get the, like the cliche dads, right? You don't, don't miss it. Don't blink. It's going to go, it's going to go away fast, you know? Yeah. And it really does. It's crazy how like with her little babies and then now she's four and she's the bossiest child. Did that fly though? Like, dude, it's, I, I can't believe it. Yeah. I mean, my, we've been married for five years now and, uh, 
I can't believe we've been married for five years. Yeah, I'm coming up on five years in yeah. January. With that, Lanny. Isn't that wild? Yeah. yeah. And you have no it's idea how the time flies Bunny like and I that. celebrate our fifth wedding anniversary in August. Really? Yeah. So Sweet. look at us, dude. We're all on the look same page. Yeah, all there. But kids, man, kids are cool as shit. Don't yeah. have them if, you, if you're if you not ready. Because yeah. it's a lot It's a lot of work. Yeah, that's so. the way I approached it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak from experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If you can be ready, be ready. Because I wasn't. Yeah. But it's been cool, though. She, she just turned 13. You're talking about time flying. This is like the first summer of hers that I'm like, even though I'm the cool dad, she's like, I don't care how fucking cool you are. I want to hang with the homies. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what? I'm like the coolest. I am the homie. Yeah, I'm yeah, the yeah. homie. I'm fucking, I fucking You're like, looking for the homies? Yeah, yeah. 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 I've been your only homie. I'm what your you homie. There was times you didn't know homies existed. I was it. Yeah. You know what I'm but, but, she's, but she's like, yep, all that's cool, but I'm going to the mall with my homegirl. Don't follow us. Don't come to the mall. And leave us alone. I'm like, they go to the mall still? It's a thing, man. That fires me up, man. Getting that, dropped I, off I at know, the mall is electric. No, I didn't know yeah, the, no, It was real. The mall is big time. You go to the mall yeah. with your friends. You look at all the stuff you can't buy. Yep, yep, bucket. Yep. You just walk around for three hours. Yeah. Yep. Such a waste yeah. of time. I don't know how it would be with a little boy, but with a little girl, it's a little different because it's stuff they can buy. My son oh, called God. me for money. You're like, fuck you. The daughter calls like, dad, I just really want this cute shirt. And she's I'm like, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm cash apping you now. And then I realized, like, why the fuck does my 13 year old have a cash app card? Yeah. So I can fucking. <laughs> get my bank account fucking molested every yeah. fucking month. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> See, my dad would give me like a twenty dollar bill and take me to a dollar general. And I got to go in there and ball out. With yeah, a $20 you have like six bill. bags walking out with twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, dude. You're filling up the entire I walk out like Jim Dangle. Oh, genuine <laughs> ostrich. No, this yeah, is three payments. Three payments. <laughs> this is this I'll is goofing. Just goofing. Just goofing. goofing. <laughs> this is the, the moment I knew I was going to go to jail at an early age was when they gave me twenty dollars go to a dollar store across from Cameron Middle School on Murfreesboro Road, right down the street from here, and I would go buy candy and then I went and sold it. So yes. I go buy this candy and sell it. And the next day, my dad was next week. Dad was like, "You need some lunch money." I was like, "Nope, I'm cool. I'm cool." So you? I, mean, I was just flipping fucking candy money, dude. Business I was man. Yes. I was hey, the, the fucking candy, kids candy always man. Went to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You got you got the blue airheads in the right yeah. pocket and the red ones right here. You got here. the kid opening yeah. up the coat. He's got all the yeah. shit you need. Sure. You got the yeah. warheads, everything yeah. you need. Remember how they had the store in middle school that you'd go and buy like yeah. pens and stuff? Yeah. When I realized that was a thing, I took over that market. Yeah. So then I had candy. He's selling school supplies. I was, I don't know, fuck, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. I was middle school, 7th, 8th grade. You're doing the handshake exchange with a Tootsie Roll? Yeah, sure. I was like straight <laughs> fucking hustling. Yeah, I had, I had a whole thing going. And my brother tells me all the time, he's like, yep, that's when I knew you were going to juvenile shortly thereafter. And sure enough, by the ninth grade, it was dime bags of pot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bags yeah. of pot. Yeah. Better money in that than now. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, fuck it. Fuck the candy money up. And I could get high. That was even cool. Well, and you get in the 10th grade, kids quit giving a fuck about candy and start yeah, giving really a fuck do. about weed. In the 10th so. grade, people were doing coke. Yeah. Yeah. Was like, hey, listen, right. what school were you going to? Not I didn't know about blow, coke until sure. college. Yeah. I saw that the first time I was like holy didn't shit didn't know about coke till Jelly Roll's first time on the bus <laughs> <laughs> I was in here sweating it out that day dude God, coach hey. of sweating out I can't get over the AC in here man this How is nice fucking is incredible compared to last time dude it's fucking uh, listen I just came here I was like this is fucking the fucking boys dog Jesus Christ son. Hey, hey, there's a fucking shitter there they got a whole set built outside yeah we got a nice little thing going on with the You're set right. yo is the ice cream spot still two three doors down so they used to, I used, I owned an ice cream truck when I was in the streets. I shit you not, it was one of my cover-ups. And I used to come get ice cream from right There's a here. lot of drug dealers listening to this podcast right now going, shut the fuck up, no. man. <laughs> <laughs> Every ice cream truck comes up, get the fuck out of the car. Hey, hey that's, that snow cone yeah. mobile, they selling snow for yeah. real out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude, it snows in July. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, right dude, that's here crazy. around this new area, they had the like good shit, like the SpongeBob's and the Dorothy Explorers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that Man, shit was you could bullshit, get dude. You pull that. up, you see the picture, it looks awesome. You get yeah. out, he's got like oh, one yeah. eye down here and shit. <laughs> Where the fuck do you make the SpongeBob? <laughs> it was generic and knockoff. Dude. No, we had the hustle, man. This was the spot, dude. I used to come over here like once a week and load the ice cream truck up. Load Bro. the ice cream truck up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Jelly. 
I know we talked about this in my podcast, but speaking of juvenile, tell Taylor where you watched the Music City Miracle from. <laughs> Is that why you plugged that? Yeah. Oh, that's so. Because hey, listen, for those of you that don't see my monitor, that's right here. Alex just popped up. Jelly Roll was at the Music City Miracle, kinda, and I'm like, what a weird fucking segue. Yeah, we're talking yeah, yeah. About. I was. I'm like, Yo, why I was, would I bring I that was, up right now? Was, <laughs> yeah. No, I was. I was there. I incredible. actually got to witness this. It was a historic day in Nashville history. Right from my cell in the B pod of the juvenile facility, I could see it straight out the window. Yep. So I could see the other Time Megatron. Out. Out. Let's go back to the window talk. <laughs> what the fuck was that? We're not starting this shit today. Winder. <laughs> winder. Yeah. yeah. It's like you pulled that out. Of, you've been talking. Well, you've been enunciating everything. You, you look through a window. window you sleep on a pillar. Yeah. Like, yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Somebody yeah. bagged me up here. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Shit. I got gotcha. you. Oh but I've seen it right through there, man. It was fucking a magical moment. But they had our sales in the B pod right there on the corner. Ernest asked me, like you said, I was like, oh dude, I was there. I was as close as you could get outside of the stadium. I said, where'd you sit? He goes, juvenile. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome, dude. It was a historic. Oh my Listen, God. my dad went to the game and he stopped outside the cell window and waved at me. I was like, what's up, pops? He was, yeah. And then I went and watched the rest of the game and he was in there. It's like the screen. You can see the big screen. Yeah, you can see the screen. There's a juvenile hall right next to the Nissan Stadium. Yeah. Right next to the Nissan Stadium. Really? Yeah. I mean, like in the fucking parking lot like you could uh, piss from porch to fucking entrance in. what great building where y'all would pull into yeah on the s lot yeah yeah that's the juvenile center holy shit yeah hey, your cool. boy just learning shit every day yeah, yeah. for sure educational podcast yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 i'm learning geographically I'll take, I'll what's going it. on yeah. you, you, you should come yeah. with me next time i go back up there to the juvenile hall? I go up there like once a year and sing songs and talking shit. Do you really? Yeah, oh, yeah, style. that's yep, awesome. Yep, yep, pizza and shit. I want to go. Come on. Yeah. So awesome. what, do, what do they, what do you just go in there? Just go in there and talk to the Dab kids. some kids up, sit in their cell for a little bit? Just do that. It, nothing makes their, listen, because when I was in there, it was like nobody like us ever came to see us, mm -hmm. right? So like, God bless them, the Gideons would come and slide a Bible under your thing, which I appreciate, and I read it, right? But they'd be like, have a good day, young man, in a suit and a tie. And I'd yeah, be like, yeah. you know, it wasn't like nobody cool was ever coming in like, yo, let me talk to y'all about how shit can be okay for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I don't talk about it much because I'm not, like, one of those pet me on the back guys. But, like, as I got more successful, I go back anywhere from one to three times a year. I think getting out is a, is a big deal because a lot of those kids, there's just, like, a statistic. You go in there, like... It's a revolving Under 18, door. you're all you're back sure. in and out door. always. Yeah, it's a revolving. And nobody ever came in there and showed hope. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like nobody ever came in there that was cool, like tatted up. Like fucking Taylor Lewan's in here, fucking Ernest is in here, like fucking cool people that they're like, they can look at and be like, yo, okay, this isn't like because they got some dude in there with a degree that's trying to tell you about how to make better decisions. You're right. like, what are you talking about? I don't know one you person know, in my family. You know what I mean? Life, I don't, yeah. yeah, like, get the fuck out of here. But you get somebody they relate to, and I just feel like that helps. So, yeah, we should go one day. Yeah. Super I'm 100% cool. down with doing that. For sure. That'd be awesome. We used to do, this is kind of kind of different, but at Michigan, they had Mott's Hospital with the Children's Hospital. We go there every Thursday during the season. And I was thinking about getting on that train again here somewhere in Nashville. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, those people sitting in those hospitals, those kids sitting in juvenile. Daymaker. Dude, Daymaker, you go Daymaker. out there, talk to them a little bit, and it, it doesn't take any but five minutes of your time to change change yeah. their life, possibly. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'd be super down to go do that. Yeah, let's do it. For those kids, like, how how did you and your, how did you decide, like, I can't be in this shit anymore? Because I feel like drug dealing, now nah, I've been watching Narcos. Right. I feel like, <laughs> like, like drug dealing, like, that's a hard business to get out of. Yeah. You start making a lot of deals with people. And then people are expecting things out of you and you stop giving them what they expect. I don't know how that shit works, but right. explain it to me. Well, for me, it was like the dream it was my way out. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Like I just like I didn't I got to the point where I fell in love with the dream of music so much that money didn't matter. Mm. And when that happened, my whole life changed because before that, it was like, I need money. Mm. I don't care about nothing else. Let me go find money. Fuck a dream. Fuck a future. I need money right now. I don't care what it takes to get there. I don't care what problems come my way behind said money. I want money right now. Mm. Then I got to the point where like the dream of being a musician was so much greater than any money could bring that it was like, I didn't care if I was like, I remember pulling back to my neighborhood one time proud of like this 96 conversion van I had that mm. I was touring out of. Yeah. I was proud of it. 
Mm-hmm. I like pulled back in to see the homies. I was like, yo, I've been touring this thing. I just did a hundred shows and I'm showing them my little sleep bed that I've created in the back. Yeah. And this is the same dude that once owned like 12 cars yeah. in that same neighborhood with like rims on them and shit. But I came back like happy, like, man, y'all got to see this shit, man. Because in my mind, the fact that I just did a show in Missoula, Montana was a fucking big deal. Yeah, yeah. dude. You know hey, for, for like, Nashville rap artists, getting out of the city and going and playing shows out of the city, like, that's a big deal. A and going and touring deal. because there's a lot of there's a lot of really good talent in Nashville. And the hardest, the hardest part that I've seen, and you, correct me if I'm wrong, but getting out of the city is the toughest part. And it's tough to ever pop in this city without getting out of the city. Why is it so hard to get out of this city? Because this city is viewed as a country. Yeah, country yeah. Town? We're just over. I just in the last couple years, like started getting respected around town outside of the urban community. Mm-hmm. Right. And thank thank you. Shit like bussing shit like that has helped so much. Ernest has been such a liaison for me on the countryside. Mm. Like country artists would not fuck with me until Ernest did. Really? I sh- and I'll say it publicly. I don't care. When Ernest started fucking with me, well, we've known each other forever anyways. But when Ernest was like, I don't give a fuck what y'all think. This is my boy. He's a hell of a songwriter. Yay, Rasp, but he's bigger than that. Instantly the DM ping, 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 ping. You really? feel me? Like it just changed everything. Like people started being like, oh, okay, maybe this is worth I quietly built like a huge business in this town Mm. that never even got winked at because it was so different than what everybody else does musically here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, then it happened. So he gave, he's right on the nose. Like for me, all them cars, they didn't mean shit. The fact that I just went and did a show in fucking Bozeman. Fuck y'all, man. I'm fucking, I didn't sell number 65 tickets, but boy, they were 65 people that love me. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was like, it's like when you have a bad golf game, but you par number three. They're yeah. like, how'd you play today, man? I mean, I should have parred the shit out of number three. That, yeah. What that really says is I sucked 17 holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so like for me, it was like the logistics didn't matter. I was on tour. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The fact I was sleeping in this old beat up ass van. Side note to the fact yeah. that I just went and did a hundred shows. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So Especially for me, you go across the country, Northwest. Oh yeah, and people know who the fuck you are. That's yeah. badass. That was huge for me. Yeah. That to me is like when we went to Will's wedding. I was in like I went to a bar we talked about in the last podcast, and the owner of the bar knew who I was. And I just thought that's the coolest shit ever. I'm just like an offensive alignment. Like right. you don't think outside of Nashville, anyone's really give a fuck who you are. Right. And people like. You know, there's guys on my teams, there's guys all over the league that like don't care about that. But someday, if you don't do anything after football in the spotlight, right. you're going to go somewhere, you're going to go to a grocery store and you're going to play a guy. You probably played sports before, right. but no one's going to know who the fuck you are. Right. And I think people need to do a better job of soaking that in. How cool that is, is yeah. that people care about you enough right. to view you all the way across the country. They have totally different issues, different stuff going on in Bozeman, Montana than they do in Nashville, Tennessee. Right. Yeah. Right. And these people are still listening to you and listening to you and, and picking up on that. That's badass. No, it's insane. Yeah, y'all have also gotten big because of the podcast, Bubba. It's crazy. A lot of people, there's people that I know that do not watch sports that watch this fucking podcast. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. For sure. I, I was, I, Ernest is the same way. So you don't know how many times a day now from people I would never think would listen to Ernest have came up to me like, you're not a goddamn concrete expert. And I'm like, that's <laughs> fucking great. That is fucking great. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, baby. No, you're not. But hey, I learned my lesson from you because I got my driveway paved last week and I was pulling back up my street. And boy, if I wasn't about to take a right turn, I was like, they just paved it. <laughs> Park in front of the now, house. You know how you know what I love about Ernest? His little nephew was going to do some of them snap poppers yesterday. Yeah. And this is how you know Ernest has got pride in that new driveway. He goes, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> On the sidewalk, not the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> on the sidewalk, not the driveway. Bro, they've got sidewalks in Nashville. <laughs> yeah, sidewalk by uh, on the, the little the, the sidewalk. Little curve. Yeah, to go up to walk up to side. the door. Yeah, what's it oh, called? What's the, it the, called? Walkway. the walkway. Yeah. The walkway, not a sidewalk. The yeah. oh fuck, what I'm is gonna it? have to read something. <laughs> I love the way y'all. Oh, oh yes, candidates. I, mine's fucking earns up. I, I, this is so I, much more me. I love God, I was scared I was going to have to do fucking bare bottoms, man. I was like, <laughs> fuck, man. They don't got nothing. I love their boxers. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You're a dipper? I used to dip. I used to chew. Used to used to chew. I used to chew. You know, I would I would like to try a can of dip cuz I like dip, but I'm try I, I got You'll away love from, I got away from the uh cigarettes. Yeah. So I want to leave the nicotine alone. We ever uh, anything uh, a that dish has like tobacco? Guy, the, the vape 
You were a, a no, douche, no, never, douche, never that. No, 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 listen, we just call those giant flukes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love that it. it's called the douche flute. Oh, the douche flute. My tattoo artist no. calls it the douche flute. I love Shout candidates, out though. No, I used to smoke the wax pens a lot. When, wax pens When they rock. first came out, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd throw some dabs in the wax pen.Es. Was never it ju- got just into, tobacco you're talking no, about? No, just dab. weed. Okay, yeah. yeah. Weed. <laughs> it's kind of a different no deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just THC. Yeah, yeah. Just something as natural as you can get it besides the fucking... First time I ever met Jelly, we did a dab, I'm we pretty sure. Fucking and this, I was uh, probably 20 years old. We did a gorilla thumbnail, too. It was yeah. a big old What's baby. a gorilla thumbnail? Ooh, baby, it's a big old house. <laughs> a big glob oh, of, we, we did of a horse wax. fly. We're talking about one of those. Can't go, can't old... go gorilla thumbnail the horse fly. Yeah. What the fuck? Well, it's the same thing. Those are synonyms. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's range of size. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, what's bigger, a gorilla nail or a uh, horse fly? I'd have to see them beside each other. <laughs> <laughs> hey, depends on the gorilla. <laughs> We're talking Holy baby shit, gorilla. Dude, I'm pass out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did a big old one. Have you thought about CBD at all? You ever try that? Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been working with uh, Game Up Nutrition. Game Up Nutrition. Yeah, yeah I love them guys, man. They're really good people. Mm-hmm. It's a one of Nate Diaz's properties. So really? They, they sent me some shit, and I, I got into it. It's been cool. I'm a big fan of Nate Diaz. How he doesn't give a fuck. He does not. Right in that one at that press fuck. conference, yeah, he like under the table, like the smoke's not going to show yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Dude, the best fucking... part is when they asked him about it, his rep was like, "Yeah, that's his own cannabis line." You know what's crazy? That that's the only state that he was allowed to do that in Nevada. You know, no, they they fought in Arizona that time, and oh, Arizona really? doesn't care about weed at all as Public far as smoking, ath- yeah. athletic commission. Yeah, so it's like, dude, I mean, what a genius way! And it was his own brand, the Kill Four. Didn't he pass the blunt off to somebody in the audience? Yeah, he does it every yeah. time. Yeah, for takes sure. one hit. That's amazing. God, yeah. I had a I had a friend, this family I grew up with in high school. They uh they opened up their own marijuana company in Arizona. They have the largest indoor grow really in all of Arizona right now. Uh, plug Gold mine. I'm there, baby. No <laughs> question. True yeah. Infusion CBD. True yeah. Infusion 2.0, I believe it is yeah. dot com. But they got they got CBD. They do all the gummies. I know. I guess. I guess. Uh, what was it? Canada dips. They're not yeah. a fan of the gummies, yeah. but they crank those things out like nothing. I've been to their like warehouse. Yeah. Dude, it's like an operation in yeah. there. It's a it's a highly functioning business. Yeah. I'm gonna get and to go see great. it grow in a couple of weeks. We go. In Michigan, God, really? they got some good and uh, there, one of one of my homies runs a grow, and uh, he's want, he wants me to come by and give me the tour, and that's like one of my dreams. I mean, I've seen a plant, but I haven't no, seen no. when you see uh, yeah, the, yeah, right. place, and there's just it's just filled with plants. A factory, it's yeah. just dollar bills oh everywhere, God, dude. Smell hundred dollar bills. Oh, the smell! I love the weed from like places like Arizona and Michigan, especially though, because we know it's indoor weed. Yeah, you yeah. don't have a season that yeah, you, you can grow, grow outdoor you weed. Grow you know what I mean? So you don't have to worry if you're getting something greenhouse or something off the side of a mountain there. Mm-hmm. That no, Mickey Mouse getting, snickle for it. You're getting some <laughs> greenhouse, baby. For sure. Dude, that shit's that that is wild. I wonder what they're gonna do in the NFL about all that with the uh, marijuana and stuff. So I many hope guys. They do. Uh case leads more talk, changing marijuana rules. I this whole marijuana thing is crazy to me because we go through the like, uh the CBA, the collective bargaining agreement. The NFL goes through that all like every few years or however, whatever long it is. The last one was in 2011 before this previous one, two years ago. And uh, it's just, if you think about it, it's a billion dollar businessmen and their lawyers versus a group of ex NFL players and the lawyers we can afford, you know? Right. So it's like, you're never going to win the battles you want to win, but it's, it's crazy to me how many players wanted to change the marijuana rule. And the way it was before was in on 420, believe it or not, is when they could test you. The, they could test you from 420 to the end of camp, which is like 615, June uh, June 15th. That's petty. Then they can't test you again until camp, and then you have two weeks of camp. That's the time they get to test you. Now, if you're not dumb, you you will obviously, and you do smoke, it's like, okay, just stop smoking a month before April 20th, and then don't, and if you don't get tested, wait until after camp. But guys were so busy trying to get the marijuana to be changed, and it got changed to, they can only test in camp now. Right. So the first two weeks of camp, it's like, that's where the business thing comes into is like anything you give, like anything you give up, like you want, you want more marijuana rules, like, like restrictions lifted on that. You have to give up X, Y, and Z an extra game or, or something, you know, you don't know what goes hand in hand, right. but if they give you something, they got to get something. Mm. So it's, I think it's a matter of time before it's legal through all sports, especially when it goes rec nationwide. Right. I think all the, the conversation, uh, because of what's homegirl's name that got, is not going to be able to do the Olympics. Shikari Richardson. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad we so, brought that up. We got to talk about I, that. I think what I've seen just on social media, the conversation is going that direction of like, 
she doesn't. That is not a punish. It's not a performance enhancing drug at all. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> you, all. you win a couple sprints right now. I don't you know, want to you know sprint. <laughs> in fact, she wants to sprint you after you smoking. Want, you the don't best, want to the best meme I've seen was dude said that that makes that that ten point eight second run that much more impressive. Yes, yeah. like you're telling me she's a cannabis user and fucking listen. It's fucking insane. They got to stop it, man. You got to, yeah. you got to, I think it's fuck. You know what I did respect was what Nike said. What'd they say? They were just like, yo, we're backing her. Like she was honest and we're going to back yeah. her. Good for Nike, Where dude. most yeah. sponsors That's are like, good. oh, got a dip right yeah, now. It's controversy. Ya. They were just like, nah, man, she was honest with us. And we yeah. For Nike to stand by yeah. that is a, is a good, I mean, that's a power company. Well, it yeah, also sure. shows yeah. you where marijuana is going in the direction. People right. don't see it as a big deal anymore. No, for sure. You know, I remember when I was growing up, it was, it was like, oh shit, that was terrifying. You had the dare, people come in, the cops talk to you about selling drugs then all of a sudden you're on coke and heroin and all that shit you know what I'm saying? Dude, there was a there was a dare tent set outside a gnc one day um and i was i was walking in there and she started to talk and i said i'm using <laughs> I, I don't even i don't i feel too bad to sit through this right. I, I'm, yeah. I'm currently high so let's not do this that's a whole nother argument too like the whole war on drugs is like narcos my dude says it best, man. He's like, look, we need to accept that drugs won the war and figure out what to do now. So do you think yeah. they all drugs should be I think that legal? That the so I should best, finish that sentence. Yeah, within reason, right? I think that if we can, I would much rather have, a, I had a, so heroin use has affected my family extremely personally. We talked mm -hmm. about this on yeah. the podcast. We all know this, right? So it's like, I fear, and I've lost so many people I love to overdoses that I wish there was some way to regulate that. Like Canada. So I could not, you know what I mean? I understand there's always going to be a black market for it, right? But it's like, I feel like there's a way to regulate it that we could solve so many deaths a year of overdose and fentanyl and restrictions of things that if we were just more open and honest to be like, man, we need to figure this out as a, as a, as a, a, a nation, mm -hmm. how to fight this and at least regulate it, right? Because to this day, the way pills are pressed, I I won't take a Percocet unless I or a Lortab unless I get it from a doctor because mm -hmm. I'm afraid of what it is on the street. Yeah. But these other people, which I also would only take a Lortab if I needed it, right? Because my drugs of choices are marijuana, liquor, and the occasional sniffer, right? But I'm not like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not like, you. you know, I'm not like. Killing out. Right, yeah, yeah, but it's like, but if I know people on pills that I worry about every single day, and I'm like, man, I wish there was a way to regulate that and I didn't have to go to sleep every night wondering if tonight's the night you got a press pill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, pills are such a scary thing because yeah. when you first start taking them, it's like, it's not like they're painkillers. Like you forget they're ever, pain ever existed. Like right. you just feel amazing. Yeah. You know, you get in, the Titans are really good about it. They, they're really smart about what they give you and how they give you things. But there's, there was a point in time and I know guys talking when they used to play in the NFL, it's like, if you had anything. It was like, take a handful of these and you'll be fine. Right. Well, the issue is you start taking a handful of those. And after a while, a handful, a handful doesn't do anything. For yeah, you right. Need two you can keep bumping that up, bumping that up. And then you're like, okay, you know, hey, you got to stop. Yeah. You should probably it's amazing chill. how many pills you can end up taking in a day if, when your tolerance is. Like, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I can't, I can't imagine it's, it's crazy and it's so easily accessible. Right. So I understand what you're saying. It's just, that's a weird, it's a hard road to go down. And for me to be like, yeah, for sure. Cause. It's like, well, wh okay, what do you do then? Do you say, hey, you can, like, for me to look at somebody and say, you can buy heroin now? It's, it's a crazy idea. Well, in you know? Canada, they have, like, clinics to where addicts will go just, like, to a minute clinic type facility, and a nurse will administer you a non-lethal dose because their problem was so bad. They treat it like a disease versus a crime. Really? Yeah. And that, I mean, that's one option. Now, there's obviously, like you're saying, there's going to be a wrong side to it, of course. There always is. But, it, but what it all comes back to to me is if we're just talking about weed, you can eliminate a bunch of other bullshit, especially for NFL players and pain management and all, and just athletes in general. I think weed is a great way to recover. For sure. I, I'm recovering today with weed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, not just weed, but like, I mean, the CBD thing we kind of brief, briefly yes. touched on, it's like, I mean, that stuff is, there's literally no THC in there. Like, not right. enough to get you high, at least. So, it's, right. it is one of those things, like, maybe you should start looking down more holistic ways of treating these kind of types of issues for players, but for anybody in general. Mm -hmm. my, my experience is my experience because I'm an athlete, right? So, if CBD helps and it doesn't hurt, then what's what's the problem? Right, I think that right. goes for, for any drug. But as what, far as this, is, what, what was the lady's name? Shikari? Shikari Richardson. Yeah. Shikari Richardson. Yeah. Sad. 
Let it's it a run, huge, baby. it's a Let huge it bummer. Run. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to play devil's advocate. I don't believe what I'm saying, but it's like, there are rules put in place. Right. So if you want to run, you can't piss hot. You just can't. Right. right. And this is coming from a guy that got popped for a PED in 2019. Right. Like I, I didn't know I was taking it, but at the same time I pee and I still have to suffer the consequences of what's going on. Do I think she should be able to run? No question. Right. Cause it's not like she had like, you know, some sort of drug that makes you faster. I don't know what makes you faster. Yeah, right. You know what she I'm saying? Dope in like freaking blood transfusion. Yeah, all exactly. That, yeah, doing all that stuff, shit. Yeah. And I think that's more for endurance earners, but we'll touch on that later. I think, um, <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> I, when we're talking about the weed side, I can talk a little educated. We talk about running exercise. Yeah, yeah, I'm just sure. here to watch. You've been working out a lot though. I did. Oh, did. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I kind of fell off the wagon. Sorry, Wilson. Um, is that the volleyball or who are you talking to? Wilson is our trainer. That's hilarious. Sorry, Wilson's my best friend. <laughs> I don't know who Wilson yeah. is. Wilson, Wilson, is no Wilson is our trainer. Wilson's our trainer. But um, yeah, it, I tried doing it the first couple weeks of having the baby. And then it was like, if I'm going to work out, it has to be like first thing in the morning. Got to be. And some of these, once the adrenaline of having a brand new baby wore off and it was just fatigue and sl sleep deprivation. Mm. When when the sun came came up, it's like I don't want to go work out right now. Right. So that's why I'm not an NFL athlete. Well, I mean, it happens to everybody. I mean, if you don't <laughs> work out in the other morning, reasons. for me, if I <laughs> if I don't work out in the morning, getting up at in the evening time after the kids go to sleep is a it's a it's a really difficult thing to do. Yeah, structure is a very difficult thing to obtain. But I get it. Having a newborn kid. Are you back working out full, like completely? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm I'm back now. My favorite tweet from you as a Titan fan was whenever you was like, Phil. Twisted my knee, got straight up, walked off. I was like, motherfucker. I'm yeah. back, baby. Reading I'm the first back. half of the tweet, yeah. I was like, get the fuck out. Yeah, of dude. Hey, that I was halfway happen. through because I don't read ahead and I was like, it's going to be bad. Oh, I see the boy on the, on the ladder there. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, shit. Let's Tarp go. off. You do Look have a sidewalk. This. Look at him. Yeah, that ain't, that's at Wilson's house. Oh, oh. Okay. Listen, Ern is a fucking athlete trapped in an alcoholic's body. That's exactly right. I couldn't have said it better myself. You sling that ball too, dude. No but back when I was playing, I was an alcoholic trapped in an athlete's body. <laughs> <laughs> if you went back and to do baseball again, would you do anything differently? Did you um, see him throw the first pitch at the sounds? If I, I didn't see it, but he I saw you prepare yeah, for it. Yeah, if, if, I, if I were to go back and play baseball again, like at this age, or if I could no, go back then. and do it again. <laughs> you know um, what you know now. Now you're going back I to 14 years old and you're starting over. I wouldn't have even worried about playing any position other than pitcher. Yeah. Like I, I would have just really wanted to be a pitcher only and not spend any extra time doing other things mm -hmm. and probably would have put on more weight, like, which is ironic because back in high school and I think we talked about this. I'm like, I thought I was fat in high school and like mm -hmm. was super self-conscious about my body image. And then you have, now you have a picture of him. And now I'm this size and freaking throwing almost as hard as I was when I was playing. And I feel like I should have just put on some weight and lifted a lot more when I was playing. But I, but I'm thankful I didn't because I love making music. Yeah, music is why I quit baseball. Yeah, so, so you don't regret anything. No, and I love I love now that I get to go. I mean, getting to throw a first pitch at a Sounds game is that's a dream. Yeah, I, I used to go to Sounds games at the old Greer Stadium all the time growing up. That's really? So yeah. Wild. That's like a, I've always wanted to throw a pitch out somewhere. There was freshman year college. And you thought you were fat there. Yeah. God, you look great. I mean, I don't know what's going on. The t-shirt's baggy, but you know, no, I you look, look good. I look really good. <laughs> you know, I, I look great. That was my first, that was my first mullet. We all, uh, everybody on the team shaved their heads except for me. I just shaved the sides. God, that's outstanding. <laughs> you kept that going for a while. Yeah. I think it's great. I'm glad there's nothing you like. There's nothing you can go back and doing. Johnny Manziel. Stony Baloney, senior year of high school right there. God. I mean, solid. Sheesh. I would keep the hair though, probably. I, mean, I was writing raps for sure that yeah. night. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, dude, I, was, like I that knew something sure. about that kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that kid, that kid, kid knew jelly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew jelly. You knew jelly back then? Yeah. yeah. What were you doing? What year was that? That was 2010 or 11. Yeah. What were you doing 10 and 11? Uh, I just got back from a little vacation. Yeah, a state funded one, <laughs> <laughs> a court ordered one, a court, a court ordered, ordered and state yeah. funded I was, vacation. I was, so I've always been a, a rapper. I've yeah. always rapped. I've always been a local hip hop kid. Mm. So it's like, and you never did sports. I don't want to cut you off. You, if you were ever into sports at all, I played sports in early middle school. Okay, but right? they never but really transferred over to high school, or you didn't never know was. I, I was. I'd, I'd already decided to be was something totally different. Yeah, so. in hindsight, wish I'd have took that route. Right, you know, but. I'd already, the candy man had already advanced into stuff that was not 
football friendly. Yeah, you know yeah, 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 so yeah, I, was, yeah. I was already making those kind of. Decisions he was selling stuff. pink footballs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. That shows me how much of a little yeah. druggie you are. That you're <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was also. It's like. Back then, I don't know if we touched on this before, if I've ever touched on this, but being a white rapper was rare. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're old enough to remember the era of like there was like a time where there was like four white rappers on earth. It felt like right, yeah. You know what I mean? Like literally. So it's like you think about me coming up in that era of rap. So all through Nashville, everybody who rapped black or white, I knew. But if you were white. I really heard about you. Yeah. Like, because people would immediately come to me like, yo, there's a white kid going to this high school, you know, duh, 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 duh. he goes by snow. That's this kid. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, okay, dope. Let me hear something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it just all kind of came. The Nashville hip hop community is really small, really small. So like everybody knows everybody. In it's that growing. Group. It's though? like, it's like the country community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it like is. you've ne- like to, I tell people all the time that everybody in the, there's a million singers and songwriters in America, maybe probably more that are just trying to meet 40 people. Cause there's only really 40 people that make a fucking difference on that street over there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like maybe 50. So it's like in our business, it's like maybe 30 rappers in town that are like really trying to chase it. Maybe 40. I'm sure there's a lot more kids making music in the right. basement, mm. but there's probably seven that could sell out a club, mm. you know, six that can sell out a club. That's pretty easy to know who's who. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah, they came to me early and he was super dope. He could Ernest is like a rapping motherfucker. He sounds like he's just fucking he sounds like he's right fucking here. Yeah. But he sounds like you can just kind of do anything at this point. I thought that was a big like alternative punk rock kid and I was on his podcast and throws up, you know, Serotonin. some shit that sounds like taking back Sunday all of a sudden. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, no, no. He's he's a the first time you put that thing on your tongue and pointed at me and said, Do you want one? I had a mental moment where I was like, is he tripping fucking ass? Because <laughs> no, no, no. you went like this. You went, I was like, is he fucking going? He's, wearing, he's wearing, wearing his like, dazed and confused hockey like, jersey like, today. reaching at yeah, fucking like, demons in a second. You showed up in fucking a tie-dye. You just got done recording a new album, You showed up super hype, and I was like, maybe he's double dosing. Today's the fucking day, son. Taylor Luke gone. Oh, listen, your boy's going to definitely not do so hot on this one. Let's see. Oh, we got Credit Karma. Credit Karma has always been there to help you to make a better financial decision. Decision, And now they want to help you even more. So they were helping you before, and we've helped you more now. With Credit Karma Money Spending Account, you can be rewarded for good money habits. Who doesn't want instant gratification? If you're looking for satisfaction, there's no need to wait. With Credit Karma Money, you could win cash reimbursements for debt purchases. It's way easier the second time you read it. Hmm. Credit Karma Money is a brand new checking account where you can win cash reimbursements for making purchases. When you, yep, there's the wheels. They're falling off. Well, if you when use- you use Credit Karma Money debit card, you can win daily instant karma purchases reimbursements, purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. That's, f- that's a five or three zeros. Just pay with your debit card and... If you win, you'll be notified on the spot and your instant karma cash will be added back into your spend account. Credit Karma Money has always already given away more than... Okay, let's just do the whole thing again. Let's just do that whole thing again. Credit Karma Money has already given away more... Th- given away... Why do I want to say more? There's no more in there. It is still more. Is there more? I mean, no. It, more and over mean the same thing, so you could say that. Well, more and over don't always mean the same thing. Credit Karma Money has... Already given away over $3 million in instant... I see what you mean there now. uh, (laughs) An instant karma to over 5,000 credit karma members and counting. Open your FDIC insured spend account for free. There's no minimal balance requirements, no overdraft fees, and free withdrawals from a network of over 50,000 ATMs. Only from July 1st to July 23rd. And when you make a purchase between July 1st and July 23rd, you'll automatically be entered to win $1 million. Credit Karma, what? M, yes. Two commas. Uh, Credit Karma money progress starts here. Call to action. All right. We're on the home stretch. Right now, visit creditkarma.com slash win money to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash win money to sign up for free and start winning instant karma. That's creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant karma is sponsored by Credit Karma, 
No purchase necessary. Exclusions and terms apply. See rules. Banking services provide by MVB Bank Inc. Member FDIC. Maximum balance and transfer limits apply. When we first started this podcast, yeah, let's yeah let's let's go back and talk about this. I was terrified of reading these things out loud. Mm. I was like, people are gonna know I'm exposed. I can't read good. You know, <laughs> you can and read defense. I can read defenses. <laughs> I can barely read defenses. Yeah, no, 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 I can yeah, barely read. I said, Ben Jones, tell me what to do, baby. Yeah. Um, and now we read them all the time because why? Sometimes you got sometimes you got to expose yourself to get better. The best part you know? is when you went do do do. That's fucking uh, uh, yes. Dude, who did that? Ste- Every my life is about just stealing people's shit. I think that's a Dane Cook joke. He talks about growing up, and he goes, "That's the sound of growing up." <laughs> Dane Cook had a moment. Dane Cook, uh, I've looked a lot into Dane Cook when I was like in seventh or eighth grade. Like Dane Cook was the shit, like the number one comedian. He started the He's internet. a great cusser. He's a great cusser. He like, and I, I know that sounds funny, but you know what I mean, like. The emphasis he puts on cuss words. Yes. He hit like fuck hits really he hits hard really when he good. says it. Do you have you seen the things about him uh stealing jokes from people? Yeah. He, yeah, that's a bummer. But I would if I was a comedian, so I would do the same get, shit. You got you know that from saying? him too. That's uh, yeah, I stole <laughs> jokes also. <laughs> he stole a joke from uh Louis C.K. and they like had it. There's actual conversation about them like yeah. in person and Louis C.K. calls him out and you see the jokes side by side and they're <laughs> and fucking then Louis identical. C.K. showed him his dick. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But he Dude. told him he was going to show him his dick before he did it. So it makes a difference. Fair enough. And he's a great comedian. <laughs> True. Speaking of comedians, Bill Cosby's out of jail. <laughs> the fuck's that about? How'd he get out of jail? Didn't he like Rufy? I, I'm, listen, I'm not trying to sound insensitive. I'm yeah. literally just trying to ask questions for all those people out there. So he was he was convicted, and then the Supreme Court has overturned it because uh, there was a violation in his due process. So basically, his paperwork and the way that they're supposed to do things in court was not followed to protocol. And so he basically is out on a technicality. Had a great lawyer. Yeah. Had a great lawyer. Great yeah. lawyer. Outstanding Somebody lawyer. Somebody get that lawyer's name for me. Yeah. God Future damn. reference is important. <laughs> yeah. So he's just out now. Yeah, he served three Chilling. years. It was a three to ten year sentence. Let me ask you this. He was only served a... three years? Yeah. Well, he was only it was only ten total? It was a three to ten year sentence. Yeah, ten total, and he served three. My question is this. What is it a spoof? Or was he really walking out of the courthouse doing the... I that saw was that. Jerk I saw that was that. like a couple years ago, though. That was on his way to okay. jail the first time. That wasn't that wasn't him getting out of jail. Okay. Was that like, was him on his way... Oh. That's Signature Crosby. Hey, that was him on his way yeah, to for jail, sure. I was though. like, no fucking way that's him coming out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, I seen it. it was like, what? That shit... That was <laughs> funny, though. Like, that's y'all, funny. Dude, listen. Man, I was like, fucking, it takes a certain kind of guy to do that, man. I've never changed my stance nor my story. I have always maintained my innocence. Thank you to all my fans, supporters, and friends who stood by me through this ordeal. Special thanks to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court for upholding the rule of law. All right. I don't know if I'm down with that shit. I don't know if I'm down with him getting out. That's crazy. That's fuck. That's he affected. How many people did he like? It was rape, right? It was like, yeah, I mean, it was I allegedly. Guess, it was <laughs> no, I think he was convicted. It was. It oh, was oh, he was. Oh, yeah, he raped. Hey, OJ allegedly. I see now. I see now. So he was convicted, but they had to throw it out because of <laughs> because got because it. Paperwork. Oh, he was raping, raping. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, he was like, oh no, well then that's rape. <laughs> oh, dude, that's fucked up, man. Especially the guy that's on top of the world, like he's. Yeah, a comedic genius. He, I mean, is, he, he is, and he and he was clean comic. Like he was a family. He was comedian. about not cursing. Like yeah. that was his yeah. thing. Yeah, God, comedy is a hard thing, man. Guys like Josh Wolf and Theo Vaughn that's now moved to Nashville. It's like that's got to be a hard thing to go stand on stage and talk to people and make them. I laugh. think that's one of the oh, toughest dude. gigs, dude. It's five gotta minute, be the hardest gig. Five minutes especially is a in long this time. era, especially in this era. Yeah, you can't be a comedian no more. Dude, if, oh, if, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, Back, dude, you used to be able to say whatever the fuck yeah, you, you can't. wanted, and that was like cool. Now it's like, dude, they're and trying if to I, there's still a place for that. They're though. trying to cancel comedians. That's when the world yeah. went too. Oh, that's fucked far. up. Because Let that be a safe place. Yeah, it's a comedy safe place. for some reason is a safe place, right? You should right. be able to say whatever you want and at the expense of a joke. Right. Like Pete Davidson lost his dad in 9-11. He makes 9-11 yeah. jokes yeah. on the daily. Like you have to be able to laugh about some things, even if they are fucked up. I've Bye. never had a publicist, Taylor. This is a true fucking story. I, I was going to save this for whenever me and Souls did our podcast, but I can't hold it. I love it. We, I never had a publicist. I hired a publicist earlier this year. First time I ever hired a publicist in my whole career. Mm. And I was like, because I, I did Bussin, I did uh, The King and the Sting, I did. I was doing enough podcasts. I was like, yo, this, I might be on to something. This might right. need to be a lane I need to figure out. So I hired a publicist. The first song I dropped, 15 days after hiring them, I was like, hey, just so y'all know, I'm dropping a song with a comedian. 
His name's Andrew Scholes. I came on a bus right after we did yeah, the song. Yeah, no, yeah, you played it for us right after the right, show. It was right, a yeah, hilarious before song. it came out. So I was like, yo, this is like, it's a, it's completely in satire, right? Like, it's completely a funny song. I send it to them. They're like, okay, cool. They go crickets on me for two weeks. And I'm kind of hitting them like, hey, man, this, this song's getting traction. Like, we should get some buzz. Like, Scholes is like one of the biggest comedians on earth mm -hmm. right now. Like, his rants are this, hilarious. Yeah, this mm -hmm. should be kind of working. You know, can we get some publicity? They sent me a formal email, refunded my money, and dropped me as a client because of that song. Because of Open Her Up? Yep. Oh, my God. Well, so so no in true publicist. Jelly Roll fashion, I had a publicist for 14 fucking days that fired me. And only, <laughs> talk, and only talked to him once. <laughs> I talked to him once. What was the email? Time. What were they so mad about? I don't know. You know what's even worse was they would never even tell me what line did it. It was mm. just like they were just offended by the whole they, song. They, they, they were, yeah, they couldn't. Yeah. They didn't have enough ink in the yeah, computer to tell you which like, line did know, it. Yeah, they were just like, you know. And I and I thought to myself, I was like, did y'all do any fucking research on who I was before y'all took yeah. me as a client? Like God. I say crazy shit all the fucking time. That's like was like light mannered shit. Yeah, right. right. Like fucking, I'm like, I'm you're. We, I was gonna fuck y'all anyways, then for sure. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. You sent me but on not the this, but not on shit? this. I'm gonna fuck. Yeah, yeah, I thought this was safe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Dude, I was no, like, yeah. you, those people supposed to have your back. Yeah, I was like, God, man, Jesus. So from there, I was just like, can somebody hire me, Kid Rock's publicist? Yeah, he fucking does something fucked up every month and gets away with. Yeah, it. I need that guy. Well, see, so I, I, good for the kid. Send me that good guy. for the kid. Right? Yeah, like, I was saying, I was saying the other day that. Being a comedian, like being a comedian and being an artist, like if I ever wanted to go dabble in stand-up comedy, I'd have to completely ditch everything artist because that's the the cancel thing. Like I can tell jokes in in like certain settings, but like if I'm gonna go earnest doing stand-up comedy, can't tell jokes because then I'm getting judged as a artist when I right. tell those jokes, the things I say. Come, but as a comedian, you have you do have more free rap and comedy are the two places where you should be able to just like. Yeah. say things hypothetically and fucking to make a point or whatever mm. to get a laugh. A and lot of Karens out there. Yeah. Oh, yes. A lot of Karens. A lot of Karens. There's, a lot of Karens. there's a movie even coming out called Karen, right? Yeah, there should be. Yeah, Fuck the dude uh, from, uh, what, what's it called? Get Out? Oh, That's yes. That's the same director. He's oh, making gonna that be movie good. right now. But the whole thing is, it seems like it's literally in a suspenseful way of making fun of Karen has All the, these Karens. Nobody named their kids Karen in 2021. Wasn't it like the lowest year of anybody na being named Karen? I dated a Karen once. Did she you? wasn't a Karen though. Top notch gal. Didn't work out. Didn't work out. Life. Yeah. Glad it didn't. Yeah. Glad. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't deal with her in 2020. Yeah, yeah, hey, with her name Karen, hey, but hey, we gotta we gotta change her name yeah. legally. We gotta yeah. get rid of this yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, but that movie came out. Um, okay. Yeah, comedy should be left alone, man. I don't understand. That's a that's a big place that you should be able to say the most crude and most ridiculous things. And nobody's and, and safe about from it. getting made fun of. Yeah. Nobody. So one thing you touched on, uh, Jelly is. You said you did this podcast, Ernest podcast, King of the Sting. You said I'm onto something. Why not do your own? What, dude? I just, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I've talked to them about it. If I do it, I'm gonna get y'all's guys. Yeah, no, they, they, the they, squad, they've right? definitely became mercenaries. On yeah, no, they have, they're, they're fucking. They're taking everybody over now. Yeah, no, <laughs> no for yeah. sure. Yeah, oh, they've, they've stated flags around. Someone, <laughs> yeah, they, someone they, called a monopoly. Yeah, Maybe yeah, yeah. a monopoly. They're taking down Nashville, dude. <laughs> 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 taking down Nashville. But they do, they do good work. They, I mean, it's it's fast. Top it's, notch. This, this podcast works. Yeah. So well now it's we crank we do it Monday cranks out Wednesday the boys are on top yeah. of it always yeah. everyone back there does an outstanding job I love how the yellow fast shirt the turnaround is yeah I don't know who your boy is we just show shirt. up and like, talk I mean, he wasn't uh, I don't know who he is but yeah, yeah. Don he was here last time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's not with the production company yeah, I'll right, say that right, right, yeah but uh, you should definitely do that's that's something that you have the talent to do that it's not right. really a talented job like right. being able to sit and talk with friends is really all this is yeah i, I don't know man I, here, full disclosure i have commitment issues yeah so i'm afraid Fair that enough. i would just hey like, you ask hey, will on the same yeah, fucking yeah, way no you're sure. right it's it's tough. In this chair yeah. all the time. having having one and these guys know because they do my podcast like the the best part of having them is knowing all i gotta do is show up and talk and the rest is gonna be taken care of yeah the hardest part is knowing i have to do this every week Right, that it, that that's it's a weekly hardest part. Yeah, yeah. Which, which, if that's my yeah. biggest complaint, it's not that hard. It's just like having, having that to do. Uh, and some days, like, I might have to do a solo pod a day. Like, personally, I probably would rather not, but I'm gonna mm. do it. I'm available. Sponsors. <laughs> 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 no Got to do it. But, but yeah, I mean, my only complaint is sometimes that I just have that on the schedule. But they make podcasting so. I'll be easy. honest, man. I posted this the other day, and it was about. 
I deal with extreme depression, mm-hmm. and it's something I've fought since I was a kid. I saw that post. Yeah, I saw that yeah. you, yes. you repost it and everything. Yeah, yeah it, it was a beautiful it, post. It explains my uh, my overeating disorder, my binge drinking behavior, my everything. It, it really explains me as a human. And the problem with that is, like, I don't I don't think I could. Dude, I have weeks that I don't want to fucking like talk to my wife. Mm-hmm. Yep. She's my best friend. She's like one of four things in life I am committed to. Music, yeah. her, my daughter, my son. That's about it. Yeah. It's where the kind of where the commitment train stops. You know what I mean? It's like, and I just I just struggle to have muster a conversation with her. So I just couldn't imagine like having that week to come in here and you know, I never want to feel fake. I never want to feel like yeah. I come in here. For me personally, I, don't, I feel like I'd have to come in and put on the clown makeup that day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just no. Mm. Or I'd have to just come in and be super vulnerable and cry and fucking some, yeah. some poor guy yeah. that book for my podcast yeah. to just watch me have an emotional breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fucking over here coming yeah. off a three day bender. I think, I'm sweating yeah. out cocaine. Yeah. I'm crying, talking about how I want to yeah. change my life and I'm sick of being fat. And yeah. some guy from Sony Records. Jo- Jordan Davis me. comes over yeah. with a smile, shaking his head. How's it going? You're like, look, honestly, kind of want to kill myself today. Can we? Uh, some guy, some random artist from Sony Records is sitting next to me, like, it's going to be okay, big fella. I'm like, it's not. It's you not. don't know me. Right. You know yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, I but those, don't know. those are real, real problems. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just problems that you deal with on a daily basis. Everyone in this, uh, in the world. Yeah. Has I thought the issues. internet would light me up and the fact that people no. were super receptive. Yeah. It needed to be because, said. Masculinity, yeah. whatever people decide masculinity is, blocks out that much needed lane of conversation like and especially for funny dudes we struggle with depression for sure mm-hmm. i mean i i have and i'll t- I text you like i have as well for you know seventh or eighth grade on and it comes in waves mm-hmm. everything does but yeah i think that might be part of what i was saying to you Some, sometimes i just don't want to go do a podcast yeah. i don't feel like talking I think Where it's uh, like it's low commitment. Like for yeah. your podcast, I'll come anytime. Yeah, Man, this is fucking dope. Yeah. But like, for, dude, I just, I think I don't know. I want to do some more of them. You know, I just started doing these things. Right. Which y'all, y'all was like kind of the king in this thing, and here was like the breaking of it. Like, I don't know. That's what made me call the publicist. Like, hey man, the internet didn't hate me. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, I was 100%. like, it actually was okay. Yeah, there was nice comments about me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, maybe we should do some more. Of it these. felt you good. I, I like this. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like this was kind of therapeutic. Yeah, you know, it's but, really cool exactly when I do it with is. guys like you, or especially with Earn, because it's like. I had a moment where me and Earn were so fucked up during our last podcast. I forgot we were doing one. Right. Yeah. Like I was just in there shooting the shit, and then I'd we'd look around and I'd be like, oh fuck, we're we're doing a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Are we running? Like yeah. here, every time we start talking, I look at that screen and be like, fuck, we've been on for seven minutes. Fuck, yeah. I should have shit before. I got <laughs> shit. You know what I'm, I'm like, fuck, I fucked up. And I took a shot of whiskey. Oh, Jesus. This thing's Helped you out. Quick. Yeah, oh, yeah. Probiotic. Immediately yeah. Yeah. just fucking release the demons within. Yeah. yeah. It was bad. I think it's something you should really look into, man, because it's not, it's not necessarily like, you don't have to be funny all the time. Like there's plenty of times in this podcast where it's, you know, I've had conversations, I've talked about my struggles and I don't like, listen, some of the issues you say you're dealing with, I haven't dealt with, dealt with before, but dealing with this ACL for the last, you know, going on eight months now, it was full on depression. Like there were t- like for Will, I would come do the podcast cause I had an obligation to come do the podcast. I leave and I wouldn't talk to Will for the whole week. And I go come do the podcast again to the point where Will had to show up in my house. But there's a place for being funny. There's what a place a for, friend, right? Oh dude, he's, yeah. I, I've, I've, I've kind of let my heart out to him on the last podcast when I did a solo one. So I'm kind of, I don't want to go, I don't want to double down. Yeah, no, I, love, guy, I love what you said. Yeah. About he's, yeah. he's all time. Can I, I ask you a question? Did you have an identity moment with the knee? Was it like a scary moment I more for you cl- as I had an clarity. athlete? I, okay. I had clarity more than anything. Cause you know, football, since I was, uh, I was 14, we went eight and when I was a freshman. And then my sophomore year, I made varsity. And I was not by no means like close to the best guy on the team, but we went 15 and 0, we won the state championship. And I did that and I was like, oh, I'm in this. This is what I'm about. And then going into my senior year, I got my first scholarship offer from Utah State. And I was like, oh, I'm going to the NFL. Like that's writings in the wall. I've, I know what I'm doing now. And for so long, since I've made that conscious decision of that's what I'm going to do, it's been easy. You know, yeah, there's been ups and downs. There's been issues. There's been bad games. I've given up sacks, gotten a shitload of penalties. But like, it's the playing the game has been easy for me. And I really, I, last year I was kind of going into the season, like how much longer do I want to do this? You know, there's so many more lives live. I made a bunch of money. Like I love entertainment. I love doing this. I love making people laugh. You know, I love doing like the CMT awards with me and uh, Trace Atkins. I, I loved that. It's like, where's that stuff? And then as soon as I got hurt, 
it was like, oh, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Like I should, this is exactly where my feet need to be. I need to be totally present in this moment because it's going to be gone someday. And so there's been fear along the ways of, am I going to be the same person? Can I, you know, is my knee ever going to work again? You know, you, you get hurt at the same time as other guys and you see them doing stuff I wasn't able to do yet. And I was like, fuck, am I ever going to be the same? And um, it's just made this process and coming on here and talking like it takes you out of whatever bullshit you're dealing with your life and able to sit here in front of people that you used to just meet and they'd ran a podcast for you, but now you can call close friends. Right. And so I don't see these cameras. I see them back there when I'm doing a solo pod, I get to talk to you guys and it's a, it's a chance to get away. And that's what I was kind of talking to you about is, is your ability to come and sit and talk and make people laugh is so special. Like I knew you were a special person, both of you from the minute I met you guys, Ernest sitting here in his camo fucking pants. The first time I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? All I knew him was for was cracking the fake beer in the gym and making that <laughs> bingo viral. But watching you guys work towards your process and it's good for people to know that people struggle. Right. I struggle every single day. I, every single day something comes up. I'm like, fuck dude. I don't want to, I don't want to go to the gym for the third time today. I don't want to do my rehab for the third time today. I want to see my kids, right. but this is, this is the life I've chosen. Right. And to be able to come here and we get, you know, we did 45 minutes of just laughing. Yeah. And then the last 30 minutes of us talking about real shit. Yeah. And it's like with your podcast, it's your narrative. It's whatever you want to say. So when people say things about you on Twitter or Instagram, if you want to address those things, you're allowed to. If you want to, you know, sub comments about those things, you're allowed to. You can do whatever you want in this thing. It can be happy. It can be sad. It can be anything in between. And in a lot of ways, this is really like, I don't want to say saved me because like I wasn't near that point, but it was a huge therapeutic time for me to sit here and get out of my bullshit. Because a lot of times like dealing with depression and you guys deal with depression, I deal with depression. Everyone back there has been sad at one point. And this whole thing about, you know, there's a band called The Devil Makes Three and they have a line. It's like, hey, if you feel your pulse, this doctor will give you this pill so you don't have to feel that anymore. Right. And I, this world's so afraid of feeling. Mm -hmm. So it's like being, being able to feel and being able to show people that it's okay. Look how much, look what I've done in my life. All the things you've done. Talk about your catalog of the songs you've made and what that's worth. You've done that. That's unbelievable. But there's still so much hurt in that and around that all over the place. Right. Sit here and talk it out sometimes you got to cry. You got to cry. I almost cried talking about will last week. You see how special the guy is, yeah. you know? And so it's, it's a, it's cool to sit here, talk and kind of ramble on. And you really start to figure out who you are in these, in these times, right. you know? And I think a lot of us would realize like, you know, you're still standing here. You, you, you get sad a week later, you feel a little happier because you can deal with adversity. We all handle shit differently, but you make it out of that. You get, you get better and better every single time. So, to answer your question, I don't remember what your question was, but I fucking love you. Would have, I, I you would have what we shit. decided is I'm doing a podcast. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you, I, mean, I, would subscribe, sure. I would subscribe immediately to your yeah, shit. Yeah, for sure. Don Holler at the crew. We're sending it. You'll, you'll yeah. bring in, you'll bring in uh, your reach of people you can get on your podcast too will be of wide variety, like mine, but like a wider reach, just going further into wherever whatever direction of your reach can go can i, you tell, can, can I tell your father-in-law story right quick while you're yeah, talking yeah, about wide variety? yeah yeah i met i met, I met Ernest's whole family yesterday and i met his, his wife soon to be i'm sure um uh father so his father-in-law right mr mr R R royer royer rob royer rob royer legend and i, and I go i do gangster yeah he's sitting down i go how you doing sir i'm, I'm jason d for it he called me jelly roll he said yeah Seen you on that TV program with Ernest. <laughs> that TV program. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. old school and gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's sir. cool as shit. Yeah, yeah. Man, he was awesome, man. By the I end of the like, night, we were talking about his Quaalude experiences. Yeah. 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 About was, Rob's, yeah. not Jelly Roll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Rob, Rob's 78. He had a, he's lived like three different lives, but his first one was a rock star, and he was in this band, Bread. It had a bunch of hits back in the 70s. Yeah. And, uh, his his L A his L A drug story phase is crazy. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah, this this old this dude he's is been, old he's school. He's like Larry man. David now in his life. He's, he's Larry like David. one of them old. <laughs> yeah, he's very he's Larry one of them David. old school dudes that like a plane could hit the building next to us and he'd never put his drink down. Yeah. Yeah. He'd just be like, yeah, I've seen it all. Seen it all. Seen it all. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you know, just totally. He's actually the type of guy to tell you five minutes before the plane hits that 
There's probably going to be a plane coming yeah. in. This yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like that one's not doing too well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can hear the just, engine from yeah. a distance. Yeah. Yeah. Just That's funny shit, dude. Yeah. yeah, he's super old school guy. Sorry to cut you. just made me think about it. No, that. no, you're good. When you were like, my shit touches a wide range of people. I mean, I meet a lot of people from both y'all's podcasts that I didn't think would listen to either one of y'all, mm. but it's fucking was real funny to hear Mr. Royer, which I know is your in-law, but still he's like, yeah, the fact he's so old school, he called it the TV, TV program. program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. me off with dude, that. Dude, the, the <laughs> The wide range of like knowing guys like Shab and Theo. Oh and, yeah. Uh, I mean, being able to cross pollinate those things, you're going to be able to take fans from everywhere. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's, I, it might be a good idea. Shit, it might be a terrible idea. You might do it for two weeks and hate me. Well, fuck it. We'll do it and see, right? Let's, That's well, the hey, cool thing. You miss 100% of the shots I've done, take. I've done way stupider ideas. Oh, go. Warren. <laughs> Aaron, you keep getting blasted. I got this one. Look at this one. <laughs> I'm assuming that's slick spirited eyes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Slick with a Q. Okay. The time has come for happy hour to finally live up to its name with the introduction of slick spirited ice. Slick is a brand new hard. Yes. That means boozy. Good. First of all, because I didn't know what we were talking about. Here. <laughs> Slick is a brand new hard. Yes. This means boozy freezer pop that is crafted with elevated flavors to inspire good times. Available in different premium spirit offerings, including rum and agave. Love agave. Eight percent. Uh, ABV. Just say ABV. Eight percent ABV at one hundred <laughs> calories or less. Each naturally flavored deliver. Eight uh, percent ABV at one hundred calories or less. Each naturally flavored to deliver incredible and refreshing taste. Why would they put "do not say"? I don't know then just don't put the thing on there. Yeah. Look, go down to the yellow part. Boom. Oh, you got an easy one. So I swap your say. typical summer cocktail to seltzer with slick spirited ice. Scoop up a box or two or ten at your local Walmart. Okay. So swap your <laughs> typical summer cocktail. Damn. So, <laughs> so swap your typical summer cocktail or seltzer with slick spirited ice. Scoop up a box or two or ten at your local Walmart or liquor store and load your freezer for the upcoming weekend. Just know that once you slick... Sli sip, uh, just know that once you slick, sipping will never be the same. To learn more, go to slickspiritedice.com. That's where the cue. This ad has been brought to you by 21 Holdings LLC in West Chicago, Illinois, and you must be 21 and up to purchase and consume. Please drink responsibly. That shit probably fucks. That sounds it like kinda, it's like, kind of like auto, auto, auto pops, right? <laughs> Kind of yeah, dude, I bet they're delicious. Listen, it sounds like some shit Ernest would oh, be serving. Oh, it says, at please, no, please, it says yeah. please no cursing at the top. Oh. Notes, please no cursing. You got to do the whole thing again. I'm kidding. You know, <laughs> I was going to say, we have we'll cut it. We that's them. what the boys are for. <laughs> hey, that's what we got them for. Hey, Barstool, you're paying these guys to cut that up. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> Alex, plug your company one more time. What's it called? Legos Creative. What? Legos what Creative. Hey, I was, at, uh, I was at Bar Taco yesterday, and some guy's like, hey, tell Legos I said what up. For real? Oh, swear to God. And I was like, I'm trying to take my daughter to the bathroom. I have no idea the fuck this guy is. But I was like, all right, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Him with like a deuces and like cruised out of there. Sick. He, I think he like waited and wanted to talk, but yeah, dude, you got fans out there. Legos. No problem. Anyway. I'd fuck with the slick spirited shit. Sounds like something you'd serve at your Fourth of July. Yeah, party. I will next year. Yeah, That'll be too. That'll be the ice in your cocktails. Yeah, yeah, we'll have the slick truck pull up, and they're selling dime bags out of it. Oh, <laughs> I will never. I'll have two ever. slick pops in a dime bag. I'll never let Ernest talk me into drinking like that again. Normally, it's me Listen, getting it Ernest to drink. Yeah, it you is normally whole, that. Well, I mean, we handle. were shooting shots, which was normal, but you were making me chase Not them. normal, because like I said, you don't pour shots, you pour drinks <laughs> yeah. and expect someone to shoot it. <laughs> well, I said, I said, Ernest, that went down smooth. He said, the first swallow. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I took a shot and I go, bloop. Good. <laughs> like, oh my god I just took three <laughs> shots worth of alcohol in what god we're calling damn. one shot <laughs> but Will, then he's handing me these sweet drinks man and I'm pounding them my wife grabbed me and had a real husband wife moment and said you're going to regret drinking those mixed drinks with that tequila. I was like, they're really good. She was like, okay, just telling you, and I'm say pounding it. them. Is that when it's I overheard you bad. say, I'm already fully committed? <laughs> yes, exactly. I was trying to figure out, he's either fully committed to this party or, or mixing drinks, but no. either way, my man was committed. So he didn't have a commitment issue last night. 
and five and commitments. Yeah, five, yeah, yeah, five I was commitments. ten toes down. Wife, at wife that kids, point. and fucking drinking with Ernest. Yeah. 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 At that point, I was well, exactly what that moment yeah. was. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm already committed. That's this how I heard him like, say, I'm, a, I'm pounding these things. Let's that's fucking, fucking go happen. with that, dude. Yeah, I was like, let's fucking do it. God damn. Will talks about how uh, after we did the podcast, you guys went to Zany's. Oh, yeah. And he grabbed his buddies, like, you got, like, after drinking with you, he's like, you got to get me the fuck out of here. Like, ask a friend in need, like, you got to take me home. Yeah. Like, you're, you're that kind of. I don't feel safe. Yeah. Bro, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel safe with this guy. Just, oh, dude. Me and Arn had that moment on a golf course one day. Yeah. 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 I had to stop. Well, I, don't, I don't drink a lot, but when I drink, I drink a lot. You know yes. Yeah, exactly. Kind of Shit, problem. when you were on the podcast last time, you had, I tried to say it three times, but you know, we talk over each other. You had a whole damn handle. With you, you were slipping that thing down, no problem. Oh, no, I got drunk on the podcast. I know. <laughs> I was here. I know. In fact, my fear was Ernest was going to show up with one of my bottles of tequila no, left over. I was just going to say, how much tequila do we, because there were three empty bottles of, of uh, Terramana laying around, yeah. I and mean, one of them had like some in it. But I don't recall three bottles getting drank because we had it. We had it stuff on tap. When were Bro, those being we drank? We were getting trashed, Ernest. That's what I keep trying to. Why do you think I'm in here shitting spiders out? Rafe was Rafe was shooting with you more than all me, these though. People, I was like, Yo, man, I gotta go fucking shit. Y'all. I can't believe y'all did this. If I was hungover, I'd be like, Hey, I can't come. Listen, yeah, no, man, I'm, I'm, not I'm, I'm not being facetious. I pulled up to Ernest like this. With his radiators on and clearly drool. Hey. He had the radiators my. on, dude. Hey. Radiator. Nice. No, that's fucking it, dude. The radiators. Radiator. Radiator. Yeah. Uh-oh, Coach Jones. Yeah. He was sitting there. I could clearly see him drooling himself. Yeah. And I had a moment where I was like, I need to get out and put this on my Instagram story right now. And I backed in and it woke him up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, is that your big ass black truck? Yeah. Yes, sir. God, I was staring at the thing coming. That thing is terrifying. Thank you, Bubba. Thank, <laughs> you. thank, <laughs> you, thank you. Thank you. Thank big you. man, big truck. Yeah, yeah. baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta Damn. match it. I'm proud. My wife and daughter did that for me for Father's Day last year. Really? Tight motoring? Yep. Donnie. Yeah, they did it all. They, I had no input in any of it. I really? Just, I didn't know they were doing it. I'd be pissed the wife my was wife so slick. She was like, yo, let me go fucking, I'm going to like get it serviced because we were dropping off her Jeep at the time. And she was like, yo, while I'm dropping the Jeep off, let me just take the truck. I got you a rental. Just, you know, you don't take care of your truck. Let me just go get the oil and all the shit done. I was yeah. like, okay, cool. So they're going to be done Friday and pulled up Friday, two weeks before Father's Day with her and Bailey and jumped out. And like no the shit. whole truck was customized. Now, did, have, did she ever like hit you with like, hey, you like this? You like that? Or no, she just did it on her she own? She did it on her own. See, and that I would love, scare the shit out of me if I Taylor love, did that. Taylor yeah. knows what I like, but like I'm very particular. Yeah, yeah. No, dude, I, I'm not as particular. <laughs> <laughs> He's like and a my big wife, yeah, my wife's got really good style, so I just, I just, yeah, she, she just, did a good job. Yeah, she she crushed it, man. Her and Bailey and Bailey picked out the bumper and the stuff, and her and my daughter just had like our daughter had because my she's raised her the last five years. My daughter calls her mama, but they picked out everything, dude. Really, they, they, they stitched the uh, logo, the Good Night Nashville logo on the headrest. Oh, that's fire. I mean, she thought about every little detail that was like I wouldn't have thought of even. Yeah, like, down to like sound matting the truck and getting the right speakers for like how I'd want to hear mixes and tweeters and. You know, she really, she me. really went above and like beyond. And her reason for doing it was real though. Before this, I had a, a Ford truck that had like 273,000 miles on it. Yeah. And she would always go, we ain't gonna get a new truck. Cause she bought the truck for me too. Mm -hmm. I was like, when does my fucker blow up? She was like, are you serious? I was like, I am going to, I was raised to drive cars until they explode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this thing is going to have to catch on fire on the side of the fucking yeah. interstate. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to have to be calling the ambulance before I stop driving. It's going to have to blow, blow up. Or get stuck in wet I'm concrete. I'm the dumbass that puts <laughs> new, yeah, man, right, yeah, I hate you. I, I'm the dude that has to put, would put a new engine in an old car. Like, yeah. I'm that dumbass. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, just with the engine's gone. Well, let's just buy another one. They're 10 grand. Well, put a 10 grand in. You know, I'm that dude. Yeah. 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 So she was like, she was like, I want to customize it for you because I know you're going to drive this truck until it explodes. You're not the guy that likes, oh, I've had this truck three years. I need a new truck. She's yeah. like, I know your personality. Yeah. You're going to drive this truck. Keep that thing forever. It uh, looks beautiful, man. Yeah, it's a mean truck. Well, everyone knows where you're at for sure. Yeah, for sure. They'll for know sure. when it's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful thing. So I thought it was cool, man. Good deal. Well, we heard you pulling up. I want oh, to go yeah. see that where is that true. We is. could hear it. 77 F100. My wife got that for me. Yeah. But I did everything to it. Right. Yeah. yeah. She bought me the truck. It was uh, it was my wedding gift. It was very I forgot. Cool. Speaking of Titan, you were working on 
Was it a Mustang? Well, I'm in the works of doing that now. Okay, yeah, but it was something before that, right? That you did that triggered that one. Uh, I did that. That's you the truck. restored an old. Okay, that, yeah, the truck. the truck. It used to be an old. Well, I can I even talk about this on the podcast with Chevy? Well, you have your Silverado. You just didn't bring it today. Yeah, I didn't bring it today. Right. So before we were sponsored by Chevy, um, I my my wife got me an F100, 77 F100, like Ranger, like an old work truck. Okay. So I stripped it down. I the Titan motoring guys stripped it down, painted it, everything from top to bottom is so is, badass. is done. So I I love it. I drive that thing. It's a daily. It's a daily driver. Those guys. It took about four or five months longer than I want it to, but it's literally everything I wanted. Right. And I'm, I'm super happy about it. Those guys killed it. No free shout outs. They, Phil, you better send me a check, buddy. We'll <laughs> yeah, they did that truck. I'm, uh, I got Elite restoring a Cadillac now, Elite Customs out in Franklin. Yeah. They're restoring an old 70, uh, 60, uh, 60 something, 71 Cadillac Eldorado. I'm making oh. it a permanent convertible. That's a badass. Yeah. That's a badass vehicle. I'm putting hardwood floors in it. Oh really? God. Yeah. <laughs> That's hardcore. <laughs> I'm looking at a 2001 Lincoln Town Car that I want to put 24 inch blades on. Fucking do it. And tent <laughs> windows. No, I, just, I literally like a fresh lip. Blade. Hey, me, me, <laughs> me, me, me and Morgan are talking about just going in, having like a 10 grand budget all in and just getting a pimped out rod to go listen to demos and like two twelves in the trunk. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Just That's do it. Music row needs that car. Oh, on dude, it. I'm, t- I'm doing, I'm doing, car. I'm doing, I'm doing three fifteens in the trunk of the Cadillac. Yes. I want to do that old school. Just, we need to pull I, up I want together. to go all the way back to the early two thousands on. Oh, I want to break windows. Three fifteens. <laughs> swear to God. I swear, dude, it's going to, so I had them, I had them in an old cutlass one time. And I've wanted them of ever since. Of course you did. Yeah, I wanted them ever since. So I was like, I want to do this again. It's outstanding. What are you going to listen to, Bach? <laughs> <laughs> money bag, yo. Money bag, yo. I'm pull up I looked at my wrist, I got time today. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to literally pull up just blaring. <laughs> yeah. Money bag, yo. Uh, before we go, okay. what do you guys got going on next? What's next on the radar for you two? I'm recording my podcast after this. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Music wise, oh. like, we've already talked about that. Uh, oh, um, I got a <laughs> <laughs> 20 minute segment about it. <laughs> just be in earnest. Oh, yeah. Her might um, just be starting to say. Rolling with Jelly's coming out soon, too. <laughs> I'm playing Myrtle Beach next weekend. Big Earn's Little Beach Bar Tour. Three shows in Myrtle Beach. Um, I'm looking to make that like an annual thing. Next year, there'll be more shows, but Big Earn's Little Beach Bar Tour will be a thing. I like that. And, um, yeah, just festival one-offs, and then uh, some tour announcements will come out later. And then I'm going in the spring, uh, direct support for Chris Lane. We'll go all West Coast and all that stuff. How, is, how long does the tour usually roll? I have no idea. Uh, that'll go from, like, that the the fall. It'll be fall, winter. So October 31st through, like, December 14th. So a couple months. Just going. Three nights. We go, like, you know, Thursday. Bus out Thursday at midnight. Play Friday, Saturday. Be back at home Sunday. Right, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, repeat. Just a grind. Weekend yeah. warrior shit. Weekend yeah. warrior shit. That's wild. Yeah. So. Well, good for you, man. I'm super happy. I wish we could have that on, but we'll cut it. And then when you. Yeah, whenever it's it, announced, we'll, it we'll run it. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. What about you? What you got going on? You did. Uh, you just did Whiskey Jam. Just did Whiskey Jam, man. Fucking blast. Dude, man, yeah. I had Ward such has a good done time. an amazing job setting I'm that up. I'm so proud of Ward. He does an amazing, there. amazing job. Yeah, no, dude. It was uh, it was insane, man. We had a we had a really big moment there. I enjoyed everything about Whiskey Jam. I love Ward. Second time I got to play the parking lot party, mm-hmm. totally different artist from the first time I got to play it. So to see the growth was amazing. Yeah. I think they said it was the biggest whiskey jam they've ever had mm-hmm. still to date. And uh, I mean, there was people outside that couldn't get in. It was crazy. Like, really? It was nuts. That's like, awesome. I was so humbled. We got drunk and went to, and tell you how much I love. I say this all the time, man, but I don't, I never charge all the other rhymes. Mm-hmm. Sold out, baby. Sold out in 15 minutes. Really? That's yes, insane. Sir. That's big insane. time. Yeah. That's what we talk about. Yeah. Sold out in 15 yeah, minutes. I take Jelly roll out the rhyme. Nashville hip hop. You can't. Dunn came a long way. Long way. The first Nashville rapper to ever play the rhyme. Yeah. The third rap act ever to play the rhyme. That's awesome. Only, only preceded by uh, Wu-Tang and Common. Okay. So I'll be the third third rap act to ever play the rhyme. And I think that if I had the numbers right, I'll be one of 10 Less than ten locals that ever sold it out. Really, like born and bred here in the Davidson County. That's on my bucket That's list. Like, yeah, for sure. That'll be um, cool. Sheesh. But yeah, man, we've been doing the same thing. Earn's doing. We, we're doing the weekend warrior thing. I'm doing. I'm back doing shows. They've been amazing. How nice has that been to see people Dude, back and watching? It's you. So good to see the world back normal. See people yeah. having fucking fun again, and it's um for me it was kind of a kind of a culture shock because. We were selling X amount of tickets before COVID 
And that number's like tripled since COVID. Mm. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think Save Me. Yeah. That song I, think, is I mean, a lot more than Save Me, obviously. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of other songs that did really well. You went mainstream over the course of COVID. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. Like it became Save Me kind of put me in, in people's living rooms. You know what I mean? In a yeah. way that was different. So, um, been writing a lot. Ern's been writing with me, working on my new record. So, I, we discussed this. This is funny to do a follow up. I signed that deal. Okay. I Congratulations. That deal. That's amazing. I that deal. We did. Yeah. We did have a hypothetical too. Yeah. Yeah. How close to the hypothetical were we? The one we talked about off camera? The one we talked about off camera. Was it off camera? I don't either. You said something about like guys because people in the music industry get fucked. I'll tell you this. I think we talked about the real logistics off camera. Yes. Dead on. Really? It landed right got on. Congratulations. Unreal. Unreal. It's an unreal deal. You, it's so unreal your deal is now probably going to set the tone for a lot more It's uh, it's, it's the best deal on Music Row in history right now. Really? Yeah. That's yeah, fucking real, big time. That's massive, bro. That's huge. Yeah, no, so that happened and it's been great, man. Just grinding, just fucking, just working, dude. Right, I'm back. Not that I fell out of love with it, but I put out 30-something music videos last year and wrote two, 300 songs, right? I was, I, I don't want to say burnt, but creatively, I just didn't, I just couldn't write early this year. Yeah. In the last probably month, I've been like, it was like a, it was like a getting back excited again. Mm -hmm. Even you know how you get excited about something before you do it. So you know, it's going to be dope when you do it. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. when you're like a month away from your first writing session, you're like, Oh, I can't wait to write a song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, As it yeah. gets closer, I'm going to write a song. I'm going to write a song. And then I got back in the studio and we've been cutting some demos. And as of right now, full disclosure, the front runner for my next single looks like, me and Iron Daddy, this record we wrote the other day. Really? Like it's a, yeah. Just pulled up on a whim and left with the song. Yeah, in true <laughs> true Earn fashion, he showed us. <laughs> this is so earnest, y'all. Ernest showed up in flip flops, a, a, a button down shirt that was wide open, blistering sunburnt red, <laughs> clearly, clearly intoxicated beyond needing to be around anybody, <laughs> including even me. Shows right up, grabs a guitar, and goes, I got an idea. And he starts playing his idea and he finishes. <laughs> It and I was like, "How long you had that?" He's like, oh, "I'm just fucking around." It's like, "Well, thank God I recorded it here. Let's finish that." Yeah. yeah and in yeah. true earned fashion, he's like, "Well, I don't really got time to finish it, but that's the idea." And he splits. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm for a whole five minutes, <laughs> like ten or twelve fucking, minutes. Fucking, yeah. yeah, for sure. But but we ended up finishing the record. Yeah. It's crazy. So that's awesome. Yeah, dude, man. we're just fucking really getting it done, man. I'm excited. This deal is going to enable me to do something I've never done, and it's to take a swing at um, like uh. I don't know how to say it, like real playlisting, like real radio. Yeah. So it might be a scenario where Jelly Roll's on the radio. I never thought I'd say that, ever. Right. I never thought I would say that. Now, why did you I think might you'd never be say on the radio. that? I never thought are. I would make radio-friendly music. Yeah. But the radio's starting to be more understanding of the kind of music that's darker. I make mm -hmm. dark music. Mm -hmm. And I'm blessed to have friends like Ernest who understand radio and understand me, so we know how to get in a room and stay jelly roll but do it in a way that's um commercially uh, acceptable digestible yeah yeah, yeah exactly. digestible so yeah for sure so it's like that's the goal man i hope i don't know i'll send you something i'll yeah, take you something please do. i'll take you to one me and honor working on it's mad rough like it's super doesn't sound good it's like just me and a guitar yeah it's like a demo i'm sure you've heard a few but it's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. a demo but I'll shoot it over to you and see what you think. That fires me up, man. I'm happy yeah, for both of excited. you. Sounds like you guys are taking taking the moon, dude. You guys are doing it all. Going oh, yeah. for it. I'm excited for both of you. Thank you for both coming on. Dude, thanks thanks for, for having us, man. Yeah, this is even been, as this has actually lived up to expectations. Yes, right. I, we were all in a group chat. Yes. Yeah. Cause we were, I don't know, you know, I was worried you guys were going to show up hungover and this is, it was going to be a dud. No, man, listen, to be not this thing. Stop it. Next time I say we fucking do us three and we bring Hardy. Fuck yeah. yeah. I think yeah. we can squeeze him in there. He's a smaller fella. We'll put, we'll, hey, we can close. figure anything. If we have to go outside, yeah. too, we go, we'll do it in front of the bus if we got to. I'll just to I'll zoom in from outside of the yeah. bus. Yeah. Yeah. This is Earn live hung over from the couch right yeah. outside of the bus. Yeah. 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 Man, it's cool. It's cool to watch you guys, especially being as talented as you are and having zero of that talent. It's fun right. to be a part of it and watch from a distance and all the people you guys are associated with, man. Thanks, it's very, man. very cool. So let's give it up for the boys. Yeah. That's yeah, a big, that's a good pod. You go. are welcome, fans. Yeah, Will's yeah. gonna come back, ain't gonna have a job. Big shout out to you guys. If you enjoyed this episode and love and support Bustin' with the Boys, go to whatever podcast platform you're on and subscribe to us. Leave a review, rate five stars. If you're already subscribed, 
unsubscribe and resubscribe again. It helps the boys climb the charts. And again, we can't, we wouldn't be doing this and can't do this without you guys and all of your support. We also have a YouTube channel. If you like, if you'd like to watch our show or these episodes, they are on YouTube at Bussin' with the Boys. We're also on social media at Bussin' WTB. You can follow us everywhere. Go buy our merch. You guys know that whole deal. But thank you so much. We are forever grateful for you. The biggest of hugs and tiniest of kisses for the boys always and forever.